All right, everybody, we welcome you into the Seven Mile Casino Studios on a Wednesday. Let me have a minute to mention some of our great sponsors. We got plenty of them, and they're growing, and this is good. This is good for our business, and we appreciate you guys because if it wasn't for you, this doesn't happen. Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. Any real estate needs you have, you call our guy, Gary Cooper. He was on the air yesterday. You guys know Gary's story. He'll help you 24-7. He can help you with anything from buying, selling, refinancing, positioning, whatever it is in real estate, you call Gary Cooper. Yesterday, I met up with a buddy of mine. I haven't seen this guy in ages. Came into town from Chicago, and he tells me he loves to smoke weed. I said, dude, while you're here, go visit my people at Tory Holistics. Toryholistics.com is the website. Use our website, kaplanandcrew.com, but use the promo code GRANDE. It saves you 20%. That's real savings. So if you need something for sleep, If you need something for recreation, if you need something for pain like CBD related, use our promo code GRANDE at Tory Holistics. I want to introduce two new sponsors. Now, this first one is iThriveMD. Look, I've been talking about testosterone treatment for years. You know that. People have hit me up and they said, hey, what happened to your former sponsor? Look, it's just business, right? It's just the way things go. But I will tell you this. I feel like I have upgraded to a higher level. This is San Diego's leading anti-aging and performance optimizations clinic. I've been there uh, twice already. I've had testosterone treatments and other things that I'll talk about as we go on. But do you guys realize that one in three men 40 years or older is having a testosterone-related issue? Now, when you say, well, what is that? I'm reading to you because I've written a whole bunch of notes from the doc. Fatigue, low sex drive, erectile dysfunction, depression, brain fog, muscle loss, all of things you you're like what is wrong with me it could be that your testosterone levels are all off come to i thrive md we're going to be introducing you to them to the docs um to the clinic to uh the facilities you're going to hear a lot about them here and alex is putting it up on the screen san diego's premier anti-aging and wellness med spa you can learn more about them i thrive md.com and then there'll be another url that has our phone number in it and uh, and our you know our stuff so the treatments will, uh, will improve your energy, uh, your sex drive, your mental clarity. I Thrive MD, brand new sponsor, and we really appreciate these guys being with us. And lastly, let me mention to you BetUS. So look, I'm not going to lie to you, right? I've never been a sports gambler other than horse racing. Well, I can bet on horses on BetUS. This year, because BetUS is joining the show, they were like, well, start getting into football gaming. So I'm like, okay, why not? So I put $100 in my account. I can't believe I'm admitting this to you. And I'm betting on preseason football games just because I'm trying to learn it, you know, and I'm trying to get some uh, some opinions. And I think it'll make football season a lot more fun. Um, if you put in the promo code 1090, you will get a 200% bonus. So when you make your first deposit, they'll match and give you a 200% bonus. BetUS.com, BetUS.com, and use our promo code 1090. All right, let's start the show. Hey, great friends. What's up? It is a Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew, along with Grande and the Brown Man. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, and we are broadcasting on the airwaves of the Mightier 1090. So wherever you are in Southern California, you can catch up to us on the radio on 1090 AM. For those of you that like to be involved in the YouTube chat, love to have you guys here. And so I know the YouTube chat will be going off today because of what happened last night between the Dodgers and the Padres. By the way, I'll be down at Petco Park tonight. If you want to connect, if you want to hook up, if you want to high five, if you want to drink a beer, if you want to take a selfie, I mean, I want to take a selfie with you is what I mean. Um, If you want to do that, let's connect tonight. I will be down at Petco Park. You can tweet me. You can Facebook me. You can direct message me. You can Instagram me. You can cited me. However you want to get a hold of me, I will be at Petco Park tonight. And I will be out in that right field um, Templeton uh, whiskey area. That's where I'm going to be tonight. So let's connect. Um, Okay. So look, radio listeners, glad to have you along. YouTube viewers and, and YouTube chatters, happy to have you guys here as well. Tonight, we will be on television, 7 to 8 p.m. I know it's kind of an interesting time because the Padres will be playing the Dodgers, so I ask you to just set your DVR. Channel 4 San Diego, it's Channel 4 Santa Barbara, so South and North, Channel 4. In between, Channel 118 Palos Verdes, Channel 118 Orange County. Tell your friends that we are not only on radio, we're not only on YouTube, on all the audio podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Amazon Music, and others, uh, but we're also on TV as well. So 
we welcome you inside the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Listen, let me let me get right to it. Look, there are two games left in this series. And last night at 5-0, I was texting buddies of mine that were still at the game who I could see sitting behind home plate. And I was saying, yo, respect. You guys are hanging in there at 5 nothing, and this game is over. And then all of a sudden, it became a 5-2 game on a big home run. And I went, whoa, hold on. Wait a second. Maybe it's not over. Maybe there is a little bit of magic left somewhere in the bats. And then the actual final out of the game, Adam Frazier, what a terrible week at bat that was. And we'll talk more about the details here in a matter of moments. But here's the thing. There's the bright side, and then there's the unfortunate reality side. The unfortunate reality side of my brain says the Padres are done. They're toast. This season is over. And I know you guys are on Twitter saying, hey, you still got to believe there's 30 plus games left. They're only this far back behind Cincinnati. You know, if you're not with them, then get out. Give me a break. Will you grow up? Okay. Listen, they're in huge trouble. It's not mathematically over, but it's on the verge of being emotionally over. But hold on. Now here comes the bright side of things. Okay. The bright side is there's still two games left in this series. Win the series, pump up your chest, bring your chin up, and start to believe. You win this series, and then you can start to believe. But if you lose the series, or worse, get swept. Hey, last night at 5-0, I was like, man, they might get swept and may not score a run. That's how bad things looked last night. But win tonight, even it up go into game three with a chance to win the series. Now, all of a sudden you're saying to yourself, guys, we're not done yet. It's not over yet, but I'm telling you right here, the whole season is teetering on the brink. You lose this series or worse, get swept. This season is gone. Win this series, not, not take, not, not two out of three to the Dodgers. I'm talking about the, the Padres winning the series. You win the series and then you can believe. Then you can start to believe, wait a second, we've beaten these guys all year long. Look at that roster. Look at this catch that was made last night. You know, and we'll talk about that also. And, and the Padre fans who were out there in the outfield and how much criticism they're receiving from the Padre fan base. What I'm saying to you is this, is the series over? No. Did the Padres show some heart last night and not give up and try and come back? Yes. Will this season be over if they get swept? 100%. That's just my opinion. Not mathematical, just an opinion. Can they salvage the season and make it to the postseason? Yeah, if they win this series. So there's some opening thoughts for you. Last night was crazy. The uh, stadium was packed. For those of you that may have been there, I don't know what you would report. You know, it's like Raider fans said it was 70-30 Raider fans over Rams fans in SoFi. Uh, Niners fans said it was 80-20 Niner fans over Charger fans in SoFi. And Dodger fans would probably have you believe that it was about 65-35 last night in Petco Park in favor of the Dodgers. Although we all know the story about the plane landing. Would you call it a landing? A crash landing, an emergency landing on the five freeway south, just south of Via de la Valle, right before Del Mar Heights Road. And a lot of Dodger fans claiming that's the Padres trying to keep the Dodger fans from Petco Park. So look. I'll keep rambling. If I don't sh shut the hell up and introduce the guys, I'll just keep rolling. So here goes. Here is mi hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro Padilla, rep in the 805, Oxnard, California's favorite son, Ventura County in La Casa. Grande, take it away. Uh, hello, everybody. The Milk Crate Challenge continues to do some things, um, but I wanted to talk to you about something different. Along with the milk crate challenge. Mascots don't get paid enough money. Um, I did a little research. On average, mascots get paid between thirty and sixty thousand dollars a year. Now there's some bad mascots that maybe that get paid too much, and then there's some good mascots like the Sun's Gorilla who does some crazy stuff and he doesn't get paid enough. I found out that the Nuggets mascot for some reason, who has been in the mascot hall of fame since like 2006 it makes six hundred fifty thousand dollars. come on the, the the tiger lion thing i don't even know what it is that you know i don't even know if you guys know what it is but i bring this up who's the tiger lion thing the
the Denver Nuggets. Oh, oh um, I, thought you were, mascot. I thought you were talking about some, something else. Okay. Gotcha. No, 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 I wasn't sure if this is the Nuggets mascot. Got it. I'm not sure if you've ever seen him before. I mm-hmm. bring this up because the milk crate challenge is continuing. I've seen people break their arms. I've seen people basically tear the ACLs everywhere. But for whatever reason, the Colts mascot decided to get in on it. And the Colts mascot is putting his life on the line for our entertainment. In full mascot regalia, he does the milk crate challenge. If you're only getting paid $30,000 a year, you should not be doing this. That's my point. Like, you should not be doing this for $30,000 a year. So either the Colts need to pay up and pay Blue some more money, or he's got to stop doing this stuff. This is awesome, by the way. Wait till you see what happens here. For those of you that are listening, the dude from the Colts in uniform, in mascot uniform, makes it all the way up and all the way down, and then just decides to smash all yeah. the milk crates. And I will tell you this right now. If I were going to try and do this milk crate challenge, and Browner said he would do it for $1,000. If I was going to try and do this, doing it on a turf field like the, the Colts mascot did, that to me is the way to go. Um, I think it's secure enough that the crates won't move. Um, and I also think that if you fall, unless you like break your back, you know, on the milk crates, I think if you fall, instead of falling face first onto the pavement, at least you fall onto the turf. I loved what that mascot did. I, that if you're going to do the milk crate challenge, doing it on a turf field, that's the way to go. Don't do it at all. Don't do it at all. And don't like, I, there's no way that was take one. (laughs) Zero chance. That was take one. That's dude. eight. So much turf doing this in a mascot uniform where you can't even see. Come on now, man. Come on. Not buying don't it. Don't do huh? it. Nope. Not buying it. All right. I mean, it's impressive. Trust me. It's impressive. But don't don't come at me telling me that's take number one. It wasn't. How do you know? Because I know. No, you don't know. You think you know. And I may be with you, but I'm not sure. What if it was take one? No, not take one. <laughs> Hey, for those of you that are listening on radio, this is why I always tell you, you got to come over and watch the YouTube show so that you can see the video that goes along with it. All right, here he is. Six foot, seven inches tall, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big Max, the hot take machine, and a man known internationally to the ladies as the Brown Saw. His brother's bringing the street cred from the Seven Mile Casino Podcast Shed. Here he is, south side of Chicago's own, Big Brown, JB. John Browner, the Brown Man in the house. Brown? Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh my no. goodness. Talk what about happened? anticlimactic. Man, oh, man. What well, happened? I go through the whole introduction like a ring announcer, you know, like I'm Bruce Buffer, you know, and then all of a sudden, just as you're getting ready to start talking, it's like frozen. You know, this is the the issue in today's day and age of, of radio broadcasting, podcasting, TV, streaming. We're all so dependent on high-speed internet. All right, is Brown back in the house? Brown. It's hot, man. It's hot. Am I back or not? Yeah, you're back. Okay. For now. Yeah. I come to you guys. Oh, well, yeah. Thanks, Safari. I come to you guys here today. I got a lot of questions about last night. I know usually I start us off with a different brand of conversation and I take us in a different direction. I cannot do that today. Today, I have to ask the simple question of why the hell would you close your eyes to catch a baseball? I don't know. I I, 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 I need to know. Can we get these people from this picture on the show? Okay. I saw this. The world saw this. Well, I'm not very good at booking. What I would ask the question, Mm -hmm. the lady on the left, young lady, old lady, girl, and this gentleman on the right, bro, how y'all going to catch the ball with your eyes closed? I can't see the guy who's actually behind the glove. Do your part. Once the ball goes over the wall, it's yours. This ain't Bartman, okay? The Padres needed y'all last night. And you failed him. Manny Machado needed you last night. And you failed him. You too, with your eyes closed, trying to catch a baseball. <laughs> I don't, I, look, man. Don't blame those two. Also blame the guy that we can't see. Because he's right in the middle Other of fans, it all. He's right in the middle. If Raider fans back fight, up on the screen. 
put, put, just put the picture up on the screen for one second. Just, just look at this for one second. It, it cracks me up, the picture itself, because, okay, there's the lady in the yellow SD T-shirt. Terrible she, effort. She got her mouth wide open and her eyes completely closed. Then you got a guy in the middle whose face, and he's lucky about this, at least in this still photo, his face is covered because he's got his two hands out, and he's about to make this catch if, his, if it isn't for A.J. Pollock making this incredible grab. No, no, he's not. It's about to bounce no. off his hands. Well, maybe so, but he's got his two hands <laughs> wide open like a clam. You know what I mean? Like he's ready to take it in. Then who's this kid over here to the right? Kind of looks like our former colleague Jordan the Truth Caruth, the kid in this Hawaiian <laughs> shirt right over here. His eyes are completely closed. And then here's a question for you. How come we haven't seen the video yet? Who's this guy right here behind them all who's got his phone up in the air? Right. Who? Hey, dude. He's a Dodger fan. He's got hey, a Dodger bro. shirt on. Hey, bro, are you going to show us this video or are you not going to show us this video? And then here's one last question for those that are watching, for those that are listening. You'll have to come watch. See the Hold guy on, on the right at, side? Look at that face, though. I know. Look, look at, at him. That He's so happy, this guy. <laughs> but but look, at, look at one other guy, the guy on the right wearing the Padre hat with his baseball glove. What's he looking at? Turd. Really? God. First of all, I got a rant on grown men showing up to baseball games with their baseball glove. You're not 12 anymore, okay? You, you put a beer in your hand and you catch it barehanded. Like a you man. Don't show up, like a you man. Don't, Ain't nobody got a problem like, with that. Like Leave an those people adult. Alone. Like oh, a, this don't. is a guy who just called a bunch of fans turds. Leave yeah, him turds. alone for bringing his baseball glove. Yeah. No, you are an adult. You leave your glove at home and you play your weeknight softball games with it, okay? You don't show up to baseball stadiums with it, okay? This is for men, women, any adult, okay? You, you don't do two. it. You put, a, you put a beer in your hand and you catch it in the cup and then you chug it, okay? You're getting distracted. You're getting distracted. No, We're I'm talking ranting about on this man. The two people who tried to catch three, a ball with their three. eyes closed. I don't blame the guy behind the glove. He had the hardest effort to go through because he would have had to physically interfere with AJ Pollock's glove. I'm not mad at him. I'm mad at the two people with their eyes closed trying to catch a baseball. That's not how you catch things moving really fast. Jeez Louise. Other teams well, he, have people fighting well, in parking him. lots to represent their team. We can't even open our eyes and catch a home run baseball. Ah. The old Whatever. man wasn't even looking. <laughs> Whatever. Yes, he, he says. Whatever. The, the old man was looking at the warning track. He wouldn't even, he's so slow that he didn't even catch up to the baseball. Like that old man was looking down him. while the ball was up. No, I, he's the one to rail against the most. He has a glove. You say old he, man. He has How an equal youth? weapon. He has an the equal youth. weapon. The youth need to be more focused and energetic on this team in those stands. The youth failed us. Look at that little punk. Open your eyes. Fix your mouth. How are you going to catch the ball, bro? How? Look at you. You're a national embarrassment. You young lady. I don't, I, whatever. I don't really, I don't want to bash a young woman. I've done it enough on this show. Catch the ball. Equal rights. She gets to get bashed too. Equal rights here. Well, she's terrible too then. <laughs> Open your eyes. It's you right, Alex. I'm sorry. People should be treated equally. She terrible and he terrible too. Get your hands behind the ball. We needed you. Wasted your money on those seats. You, you, you know what? I'm going to tell you guys right now. I've seen this all over Twitter with Padre fans saying, come on, fans. When the Interfere. Ball when the ball is <laughs> is in the stands for all intent and purposes, you have as much right to the ball as the yes. player does. Okay? But here's the issue. Yes. One more time. Go back to the still photo. You got to give a little bit of credit where credit is due, guys. Sorry. You just do. You know, this is the reality part of what we do. We can homer all day long. But here's the reality. Pollock oh. goes up. L.A. Cap coming out. Dude, look where his glove is. There it is. is. <laughs> look, look where his glove is. His glove is in front of check. six hands. Let me check the dial. Yeah, not 710 yet. Save it. Homer with us, man. Let's no, bash dude. the, dude, let's I bash don't homer. the I don't homer. I don't homer on this show, and I sure as hell don't homer on that show. All yeah. I'm saying to you is, is that, look, if this were a Padre player in Dodger Stadium, I'd be saying, what a spectacular catch that was. Well, it just so happens it was a Dodger player in what Dodger fans are calling Dodger Stadium South. 
Okay. Um, is it that bad? Well, I don't know. I don't know how bad it was last night because I wasn't there. I'll give you guys a report tomorrow because I will be there. Oh, look at Browner. Browner got on the LA cap t-shirt. That's perfect for you, LA Brown. That is perfect you, for you. You capping for real right now, LA Cap. You capping. You extra cap. Capping for real right now. You capping, you guys, LA. You, you, you can. What is it with Dodgers? What is it with Dodger fans making these or Dodger players making these plays against the Padres? Remember the playoffs last year? Cody Bellinger robbed, I believe it was Tatis from a home run. Yeah. You got AJ Pollock. Mookie Betts has robbed them in the playoffs last year as well. Like, what is it about the Dodgers doing these plays against the Padres? Like, man. That was a stop. great play. Don't get me wrong. It was a great I'm not play. mad at no AJ one... Pollock. He earned it was his a, money. It, it, was his a great play. it was a great play. Yes. And if you go back to the still photo one more time, what I'm trying to say to you guys is this, is that Pollock goes up, puts his glove up, and there are literally three people all standing there with their hands wide open. But the difference is, is that Pollock's glove is in front of those six hands. If one of those six hands could get in front of Pollock's glove, that could have changed down. the game. You know what would help? You know what would have helped them? Oh. Their eyeballs were open. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a huge help. That would have How been a huge the same help breath? over his massive glove if their <laughs> eyes would have been open. <laughs> How about in the same breath as saying, hey, great job, AJ Polly, great catch. It was an equally terrible job by the Padre fans. Yes. Yes. Poor you effort. You can say both. Poor, poor execution. effort. Poor execution. Mm. Well, you know what? Maybe they should do. Maybe they should fire the uh, the outfield fan coach. You know. Oh, what they should do is build the wall a little higher. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Or or, or maybe Man. we maybe we as Padre fans in 2021 should ask them to back the wall up a little bit because I remember back in 2004 ish uh, or five. I remember this. Yeah. We we were saying, can you guys move the 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 the, the wall in a little bit because nobody can hit a home run out of here, and they, and they did right. What right <laughs> field wasn't it? Uh, they they did change the dimensions of the field yeah. because you know guys back then, Padre players back then, were bitching and griping that they couldn't hit home runs, and it was because it was unfair. You know, you just it between the 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 uh, the nighttime air being thick and the distance of the wall, and I guess back then guys weren't on quite enough steroids, so they they couldn't <laughs> hit them out. But look, it I was mean, always strange when other dude, teams if Tommy, showed up and hit home runs. Let's let's be real too. If Tommy Pham tried to do that in Dodger Stadium. He would have left with another stab wound. Oh, That's God. how insane on those hand. fans are. Come on, man. You don't let that happen. Stand up for your team. So what you guys, you guys are embarrassed saying, us. Soft, what you guys soft are fans you two people, out there. You two people, you two people, you embarrassed us. We're Why a national yeah. embarrassment now because of you. Why only two? I, I, blame, a third. I blame four. I blame four. There's okay. four fans. So you're blaming out there this guy the in the glove. Leave that man alone. What do you mean? No. Why are you taking up for the guy in the glove? Why is it that the lady and the kid are the national embarrassment? By the way, there's a guy right behind Pollock's glove whose face you can't see, and you're not giving that guy any heat at all. There are six hands, six hands and one because glove. I'm, there's seven opportunities for somebody to interfere. What I'm saying, if that guy interferes, he has to go through Pollock's glove, and now we got to get a replay. If these two no, you don't. It's unathletic in the, it's, idiots. Wow. Look, Unathletic. The bottom age. line is they wow. They should have interfered. Wow. They should yup. Yup. Come find me at Browner's Podcast on Twitter. Interfere. It's yours Scott, once it goes got, past the home run wall. Mm. Scott, we got 30 seconds, but you're sitting in seats. You better not let that happen. Oh, dude. Oh, uh, tonight. Right you listen, better not. When, when you I'll be out in right field, you'll see those Templeton seats. You'll see that signage. I'll be sitting right there on the wall. I won't bring yeah. a glove because I'm a grown man. Hey, we are in the Seven Mile Casino wow. Studios. We're just getting rolling. Padres, Dodgers on everybody's mind. Stick around, everybody. Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. Broadcasting on the airwaves of the Mightier 1090 on radio, streaming on YouTube, and definitely everybody get involved in the YouTube chat. I'm sure everybody's going to want to opine on what Browner is saying, which is the fans in left field should have interfered with A.J. Pollock because we've been talking a lot about this Manny Machado ball that would have been a home run if the fans would have gotten involved. We'll talk more about it here in a matter of moments. Uh, and uh, and we got a lot to get to today. So radio listeners, YouTube viewers, television viewers tonight, we are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. And hey, by the way, TV viewers on Channel 4 San Diego, if you want more of the show, you can get us the full show on YouTube. Go to YouTube.com slash Kaplan and Crew. 
youtube.com slash Kaplan and crew. And you can get the entire broadcast, not just the one hour that we put on TV. Let me ask you guys a question. If you could put us all on screen, Grande. Question. Right, let me ask you guys this question. Tonight, I'm going down to the Padres game. Do I rock this the yes. swag chain t-shirt? All right. Do I rock the swag chain t-shirt? Or do I rock this? Show me your tatis. Which one of these shirts should I rock? Now, Browner's got the, swag chain. Browner's got the LA cap t-shirt up. All right. Um, maybe I'll put up a side his question. How Swag come chain. this was not an option? Why is the LA cap t-shirt not an option? Yes. Because I'm a Padre supporter. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. No? That's one way to look at it. What do you how do you look at it? No, I'm just saying I just asked a question, bro. I'm just no, saying, no, no, no. You didn't ask a question. You made an accusation. I heard you. I'm just asking questions. What is no, the I'm accusation? Not. And are we not? Are this not a talk show? Do we not go back and forth asking each other questions? Right, I just you, the question. you, you, had a, you had a tone. You had a tone. Yeah, you had a tone. Why the LA cap option? I'm just asking. <laughs> I wouldn't wear an LA cap t shirt to a Padres game when I'm a San Diegan and a Padres supporter. Now, look, I'm a realist and I am not a homer. Okay. I am a, I am a realist and an analyst. And, and I've got hope on one hand, and I've got analysis on the other hand. The analytical side of me says the Padres are toast. The, the hopeful supporter side of me says win the next two games, beat your chest, tell everybody that you're better than the Dodgers and your record against them head-to-head -head will prove it. And guess what? Um, start trying to finish this season and start trying to make this run towards the postseason. Because listen, I'm not – Who needs postseason? What do you mean? Listen, man. A wise we're in, man's we're in, said, we're in the postseason. Every the single game is a playoff game. Every single game is a playoff game right now for the Padres. Who needs to make it to October when you got 35 games left that are going to be postseason? Mm. Okay. Hadn't thought about it that way. That's what Eric Osmer said. Oh, oh. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. Thanks you Eric. said, hey, we're in, Thanks, we're in the postseason. This is every game from here on out is a must win. Every game counts. If we cannot drop games, and I agree with him, okay. every single game is important. It, like last night, the Reds lost. They could have tied it up again. They didn't. That's, an, that's a very important transaction right, right there. Right. But you know what did happen? The Giants won last night, crushed the Mets, and the Dodgers had to do the same thing, which was keep pace. And they did. You know, at some point, the Padres, because I think the, the number is now that they've lost, is it 10 of their last 12, the Padres? So I told you guys this. I've seen they won this. Two games? I've seen, really, you're questioning, have they actually won two games in the last 12? Yeah, yeah, wow. Well, they did. They beat Arizona for one, and they beat Philadelphia for one. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, that's right. but I'm telling you guys, I've seen this movie before. This is why there, there's the hopeful side, and then there's the realist side. The realist side was there back in 2010-ish when the Padres had a six-and-a-half game lead and lost 10 straight games and fully collapsed. Okay, I've been there and I've done that and I've seen this before. I've seen them fire a hitting coach with 40 games to go in the season because they're trying to fire up the team and make people nervous. Well, this year they decided to fire the pitching coach. In the meantime, last night, I got to tell you, uh, who was it? It was uh, Pagan after the game. He pitched uh, two innings and, uh, and had four strikeouts. And after the game, he said, this is probably the best I've felt since I'm a Padre. And I right away tweeted and went, must be the coaching. I mean, look, you can fire a coach. You can blame somebody. We might want heads to roll, manager, potentially general manager, if the Padres don't make it to the postseason. But I've seen this before, and I'm watching a Padres collapse. So for everybody that goes on Twitter and says, well, if you're not with us, you're against us. It's not about being with you or against you. It's about looking at things realistically. And I'm looking at things as a realist, which is, this team is falling apart. And to make matters worse, you got the Giants and the Dodgers ahead of you, and neither of those teams are falling apart. And don't use injuries as an excuse because the Padres and the Giants have injury issues along the way as well. Did I say the Padres or the Giants? Giants and Dodgers. Anyway. Giants and Dodgers. Giants and Dodgers. I'll be there tonight. I'm going to be curious. Did you guys think last night watching on TV that you could hear, was it, was it a pro-Dodger crowd last night? Or maybe just Dodger fans had more to cheer about. Dodgers fans had more to cheer about. I felt like it was fairly even, which is still negative and bad, but I felt like it was fairly even. The Dodgers just had way more to cheer for. Urias was pitching a gym, dude, for those five innings. So 
and it, there was nothing really to cheer about. Then the home run got taken away, and that kind of sucked all the air out. Because that home, if that home run again, if those people do their damn job, their I think job the game turns on that. <laughs> it, it is, is their hey, job. job as a fan. If you're a fan and you're sitting in the front row or the first two rows in the outfield, and a ball is coming your way, and the opposing team has a, a player that's on the verge of possibly catching it. Apparently, and I didn't know this for sure. Apparently, your job is to interfere. Yep, knock it down. It's not interfere if, if the ball's already over the fence. Right, it's your ball. It's a home run. It's yours. Mm, take it. Sandlot yeah, rules, well. baby. Well, somebody mm -hmm. somebody should have put their hands in front of AJ Pollock's glove. What can I tell you? Clearly, should have mm -hmm. just yanked the glove off his off his hand. Well, I mean, come on, can't let, do that. Let's take a look. Let, let's take a look. Why not? Yeah, why can't you? You came into my zone. Do not come into my seat, my area. <laughs> This is my nachos right there. Hey, look. Okay. If you're, if Don't you're come over here with your big leathery, sweaty glove. These are my nachos. <laughs> get hey, out. If, if you're swimming in the ocean and you get eaten by a shark, you went into the shark's house. Right. Yeah. If Browner, what do right. you always say? I don't go to them. They don't come to me. Right. I keep it fair. Fair yeah. game, baby. So AJ Pollock sticks his dirty ass glove over the fence. Get out of here. It's my glove now. Buena. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. You probably could have done it with your eyes closed, too. No, dude, easily. Let's take a look with a beer in with a beer in my hand. Let, let's look at the play. Let, let's look at Manny Machado. Here it is. Five, Smacks this ball. ball. Deep left field. Pollock to the wall. It is caught. AJ took it away. Let's look at their dumb faces after he took the ball away. By the way, the the wall, and I never I don't think I ever really thought much about it. The wall's just not that high. The wall's like maybe seven feet tall, you know, yeah. which which allows a guy like AJ Pollock, who's like a six foot white guy, to make it look like he's jumping up twelve feet in the air. When really, when he extends his glove and he jumps, he might be like nine feet in the air. You know, couldn't dunk. I mean, if that uh, let's be real, if that wall was nine feet or ten feet, that that ball goes off the wall. So I, I don't mind the height of the wall. Again, we just need a little bit of assistance. <laughs> what would have happened if one of the fans? would have actually touched Pollock and he doesn't make the catch, but the ball Nothing. doesn't go out into the, into the stands. It actually comes back into the field of play. So home run. Oh, that's different. No, it's not. It's home that's run. interference. If it comes back, if the, the reason ball... it's not interference is when the ball goes over the fence. That's not interference. When you reach over, when you reach over, that's when it's you get ejected. No, no. What I'm saying is, if somebody Wait, as right, yeah, I don't think you understand up, what he's asking. If Pollock goes up with his glove, right, mm -hmm. and right. one of those seven hands that are right nearby actually hits him, moves him, he doesn't mm -hmm. make the catch, and the ball comes back into the field of play. What's the ruling? It's a home run. Because once the yeah, ball goes bounces over off the, the fence, fence, yeah, yeah. Once the ball goes over the fence, it's a home run. If it bounces off, let's say it hits a seat because no one's there. And it comes back in play. It's still a home run. No, no, doesn't no. It doesn't matter if, 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 if he was. I'm, it, the whole, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a question. It doesn't matter that you hit his arm once it goes over the wall because it's no, a home run. No, but but he's up in the air and the, the fans touch him. Yeah. The ball's not out at that point because he's up, they're up. There's They touch the player. Now you're getting into, the point, now you're getting into here's details. My, here's, here's my point. Look, here's my point. <laughs> You guys are all making it seem like the fans let the entire fan base down. Had they, they touched him, had they touched him, had they interfered with him, had they put their hands in front of him, who knows what the mm -hmm. ruling might have ultimately have been? And and who knows what we'd all be talking about today? Could it be Steve Bartman in Chicago? Could it be what was it? Uh, Jeffrey, what was that kid's name at Yankee Stadium? Mayor Jeffrey Mayor. Mayor. Could, could it be Jeffrey Mayor? I mean, would those Padre fans who you're calling a national embarrassment, could they have become they a much bigger story? Well, you know, the, on the on the stat sheet, on the stat sheet, Pierce Johnson took the loss, but really it should be L fans. Yes. <laughs> L her, him, him, and him. You guys mm -hmm. get the L. Mm-hmm. 100%. And if 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 we're having a different conversation about, you know, someone getting ejected or them calling out a, a Machado thing, I'd rather have that discussion than having this incredible momentum change where AJ Pollock robs the two-run homer that Padres would have taken a lead at that point. The building was ready to erupt. And then it, instead, they come back and AJ Pollock gets a two-run home run. AJ Pollock was a four-run turnaround himself. So yeah, I don't care if I were having that conversation. 
because it completely deflated that team. I mean, I'm not one to read body language, but yesterday was so prevalent when I was watching that game. I've never seen a team so defeated. I have never like when when Profar hit that home run in the eighth or is it the seventh, whatever it was. There was no celebration in that oh, in that locker room. Dude, and dude. I mean, in the dugout, oh, it no. was the most no, no, boring. Wait. There was a celebration. You didn't see it. Oh, you didn't see the celebration. It no. was five nothing. Okay, Profar hits the home run. It's five two. He comes back to the dugout, and what happens? You you didn't see the celebration. The swag chain on. Yeah, he put the swag chain on. That's right. Manny Machado was standing there with the swag chain, and there. That's exactly what I was saying to you guys earlier in the season. When you're up, when you're down five nothing, and somebody hits a home run to make it five two, that is not the time for the swag chain. The time for the swag chain is you ready for this? When Adam Frazier comes up in the bottom of the ninth with two outs and two runners on, and he represents the tying run at the plate. When he hits a home run and he comes home and it's five five, that's when you give him the swag chain. But guess what happened? Guess what happened to Adam Frazier? After Profar, and I don't remember exactly how many pitches he took. It, it must have been 9, like 10, 12. 11 pitches. Yeah, okay, so 12 pitches. Profar has this incredible at-bat working Kenley Jansen. Dodger fans are like, oh, my God, I can't breathe. Here we go. You know, I'm getting a paper bag. I'm hyperventilating. You know, here we go again. And what happens after Profar works Jansen? I mean, makes him work hard and gets on base on a walk. What happens? Adam Frazier comes up, strike, 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 game. You wonder why these Padre players are talking to Kevin AC from the Union Tribune about we're let down by the front office. They didn't go get us what we needed. What they went and got was Adam Frazier, an all-star second baseman who they didn't need and who, let's face it, his batting average is 100 points less in San Diego in the middle of a playoff race than it was in Pittsburgh when there was no pressure. That was a as much as terrible a, it, at bat. This, uh, as much as a fan I am of the general manager, when this happened, I said it was a bad idea. There are people on this show who were like, oh, he's an all-star. And I said, look at him before last year. What has he done? He's not an, he's an all-star because somebody from the team had to be an all-star, much like y'all oh Colorado Rockets pitcher was. Oh, oh like, my like German God. Marquez? Here we go. Here we like go. German Marquez? Here we go. Argument. Oh, my God. You're going to argue. I'm not. Last, you are the last worst. week, you are the, the worst. worst. You're the worst. You're the worst. How? How? Last week, what are you talking last week, about? Last week, when the Rockies beat the Padres, oh and, and oh we were like, God. they lost to this guy. And you're like, hey, oh. he's an all-star pitcher. Guy's an all-star. They had two all-stars. We're like, no, they didn't. Trevor Story was in the home run derby. Right, they had one all-star. He was not in the all-star game. And that pitcher was only in the All Star game because he had to. Somebody had to represent the Rockies, and it was. And you used the fact that he's an All Star pitcher as an excuse for why the Padres lost to him. And wow. now you're using your exact same argument against yourself. You're the worst. Wow. First of all, let me explain. Wow. Something. If you go back and watch the video, okay, two All Stars. One, <laughs> one. Second thing, I was against this in the beginning. I am proven right now. I told y'all this guy would flame out because he was hitting in a place where no one cared about what was happening with baseball. When the pressure picked up, Adam Frazier turned back into a pumpkin. So there you go. All right. There you go. I think what we're missing here is that Adam Frazier was part one of a part two trade that never happened. The Adam Frazier came into this, to this club with the assumption that they were going to ship out Eric Hosmer and move Cronenworth to first base. And that what didn't happen. Would it so it created, created a log jam. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not defending Adam Frazier's play. He's been oh. terrible since he's been here. I'm just telling you that this was, in my opinion, step one of a two part trade that actually never happened. And unless, because other than that, if you don't look at it that way, there's absolutely zero reason to bring him here in the first place. So when we were to having this conversation, and you're and you're taking your victory parade, it wasn't that I said that they needed Adam Frazier. It was that I would rather have someone like Adam Frazier instead of Eric Hosmer at the time. So. It just never happened. And we all know, according to Scott, according to people at the front office, why it never happened. So, I mean, that to me is the only reason why you bring Adam Frazier. And you were expecting to ship players out that you just never did. All right. Well, let's take a look at Adam Frazier. Just by the way, I hate to let's beat up. Not. On, I hate to just beat up on the poor guy. But that at <laughs> bat last night was so bad. I mean, when Profar worked Jansen the way he did, for Frazier to come up and go one, two, three. That was awful. Alex, if you put that back up on the screen, because I don't think anybody yeah, had there's a chance a, to, to read it. Yeah, right. there's a typo there. Where's but, the typo? Uh, with the Pirates, uh -huh. Uh -huh. there's two typos. Oh, what man. the heck happened here? Rager Anyways, Swamp. his average has dropped by 100 points. That's all you need to know. <laughs>
two for 19 is like, I, I missed the t typo though. Usually I'm really good at picking them out. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to give you the chance. Frazier slump. Did you sell Frazier wrong? No. With pirates. No. A typo is that there's missing stats. Right. Oh, oh. Uh, well, I don't know where it's saved. I'm looking at the picture right here on my computer and it looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 this thing that I use sometimes, man. All oh, right. Man. Let, let me have one minute to just mention our great friends over at Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. You're seeing a bunch of Corky's television commercials. And the one thing Cork keeps reminding everybody is it's really wonderful if you can remember our phone number because everybody remembers Glenn Erath with his acoustic guitar dressed in his cockroach outfit. Call 1-800-901-1102. And everybody loves that song. But if you're driving down the road, and you don't know that song because it hasn't been drilled into your head over the last 20 years. I don't know where you've been. Now you can make things so much easier because if you're looking for Corky's Pest Control, all you have to do is Google one simple word. That word is Corky's, not Pest Control, not San Diego Pest Control, not even so much as Corky's Pest Control. Just type in one word. The word is Corky's. You'll get directly to Corky's website. Lots of answers because you'll have questions, uh, lots of information on that website, and you'll also get a chance to see some really spectacular deals on your pest control. So uh, wherever you may be, LA, Riverside, San Diego, Cork's been at it for over 40 years. This is the guy who wrote the textbook. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm saying literally he writes the textbook that teaches all these technicians from all these other companies about the products and the how-tos of the pest control world. So when you have any pest control problems, rats, mice, spiders, ants, termites, you got problems, Cork's got solutions. So Google the word Corky's or call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's. Nicely done, Brown. Nicely done. So, guys, which one should I wear tonight? Here's the question. I'm going to the game. I will be Not in the uh, Templeton uh, whiskey <laughs> area out in right center field. I'll be right. Listen, I'll tell you right now. Ball comes my way. Ball comes my oh. way. I hope you bring your glove. Grab no, I'm not bringing my glove. I'm doing what Why Alan not? suggested. I'm a man. I'm a, wow. I'm a I'm a catch it with my bare hand man is what I am. You're an adult. Okay. I will catch that. I've seen guys carrying a baby and a beer. Who do I let go of? Let go of the baby, catch the ball, catch the baby. Okay. I'm a man, Browner. Both. I'm a man. Show up with a glove. Child, Get out like of here. I wear a glove to the game. No, you don't. Exactly. No, you you don't. child. <laughs> Show me. I've seen you swing the bat. Hey, the bro, you saw that home run. No, I didn't. I saw the bat go <laughs> flying to short. I yeah. I gotta tell you that. Show me your. Why not? What's wrong with that shirt? shirt? That shirt's great. No chance. No, it's the it's a fine to shirt. Me, I it's a fine don't shirt. Really love it because I don't really like putting another person's name on my body. I just think it's weird. What are you anyway, talking? About? Wait, wait. I don't wait, wear wait, jerseys. Wait. I don't wear jerseys. I don't put other people's names on my. I just I don't know why I've got a hang up about it. Okay. Do you wear designer clothes? Um, those are other people's names. I don't. I try not to wear clothing that has like people's logos on them. Frankly. All right. Anyway, whatever. Um, don't let me see you know Louis Vuitton. Here's my, here's, you know, you see me in Louis Vuitton. Okay. No, Gucci. I don't even know what Gucky is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Look, Gucci. What do you think about the swag chain t shirt? Should I break it out tonight? I get a lot of compliments when I wear the swag chain t shirt. That's I'm the going with option. the first shirt. You going to the game? I'm going tonight? with the first shirt. Me? Yeah. I'm going no, to the game. It's just you two. Okay. Alex, you bought tickets to tonight's game, huh? And you're going to sit down the third baseline. You're going to be amongst all those Dodger fans. Yeah, and I'm sitting second row. Anything comes near me, I'm swan the hell out of it. I'll get ejected. <laughs> really? Don't, I'll go viral. I don't care. I don't care. How about yesterday? Just, just by the way, yesterday afternoon, um, as people are making their way from L.A. down to San Diego and from people from North County, San Diego, starting to head down towards downtown San Diego, how about this freaking little plane that gets into distress and mayday, mayday, I'm taking it down. Well, where are you? Yeah. Uh, I'm taking it down on the freeway. I'm heading down the <laughs> I-5 South. I'm a hair south of Via de la Valle, a little bit north of Del Mar Heights Road, and I'm putting this plane on the freeway. And I was, I, I really got caught up in all the news coverage of it because there was like this young girl. She's like, yeah, I'm driving down the road. And the next thing I know, there's like a, uh, like a wing in my back window. It was crazy, man, really. All right, listen, we are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. 
Padres Dodgers <clears throat> game two of this series comes your way tonight. Can the Padres even the series while the Dodgers will bring their best pitcher, Walker Bueller? We'll talk more about it. It's the lead story. It's the story. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. Don't go anywhere. Hey, great friends. It is a Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and crew. We are in the seven mile casino studios. We are broadcasting on the radio airwaves of 1090. We are on television tonight on channel four, San Diego channel Four Santa Barbara, 118 Palos Verdes in orange County. And by the way, I got it right. Like most people who listen to this show are Padres fans and or Dodger fans. And so most people tonight will be watching the Padres and the Dodgers, but set your DVR on Channel 4 San Diego and record the show so you can go back and catch up to it. Uh, or if nothing else, even if you don't go back and catch up to it, we're going to get the credit for it anyway. So happy to have everybody along on radio tonight on TV. All of our YouTube viewers who are involved in our YouTube chat, glad to have you guys here as well. And audio podcasters doing it on your own time. Happy to have everybody along. Coming up a little bit later on, the Rams make a move at running back and go out and, and make a trade with New England for a former first round draft choice. We'll talk about that story coming up in just a matter of moments. Um, and, and we'll get back to the Padres and the Dodgers because uh, our friend Brittany Erton, who is a TVG and NBC horse racing analyst, she's down at Del Mar for the summer from LA. She's a huge Dodger fan and she was there last night. Probably, Alex, in a very similar seat that you're going to be in tonight because I saw her down the third base line. I used to go to these Padre Dodger games, man, back in the day. I'd sit down the third base line because 1090 used to have these very nice tickets back then. And by the mm -hmm. way, my kids are always up my butt. They're like this. My kids are like, so, Dad, let me get this straight. So uh, when the Padres sucked, we had more tickets than we could ever want. Now that the Padres are great, we have no Padre tickets. I'm like, yes, that's right. Correct. That's right. That's, that's, that's Correct. precisely yes. the case. I have I have exactly yes. those conversations with my fiance when she's like, wait, you're buying them? And I'm like, yes, we are buying them. Yes. And she's like, wait, they're not free. And I'm like, those days are over. We have to pay. And she's like, they're, this sucks. So like, I literally have to get permission to now, buy. But you guys know Bill Hagen. Many of us doubted Bill Hagen would put 1090 back on the radio. He did. Many of us laughed when he said, I'm going to put you guys on radio and on TV. We laughed. He did it. He got it done. And when Bill Hagan tells us that he's in talks with the Padres and that they would like to have a much bigger radio signal than the one they're currently on, um, I don't put anything past Bill Hagan. They're, the days of the Padres on 1090 will come again, perhaps. And, um, and well, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's a done deal. Hardly. Um, but when that happens... You know, hopefully we'll uh, hopefully we'll have a good team and we'll have lots of tickets because having a bad team with lots of tickets sucks. That's still fun though. Yeah, but there were years, dude, where I had season tickets and I couldn't give them away. Like legit, could not yeah, give I them know. away. We've had, we've legit had this show, uh, this talk on this show before about how well, we were the last ones in the 1090 studio every every day, right? Because we were the ones on the latest, and they would always ask us, "You guys want tickets?" No, no, we're good. No, we're good. Thank you. Yeah. I would, I would like call friends and go, Hey, I got some tickets for tonight's game. You guys want them? They're like, nah, 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 nah I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. A lot of times I would just take the tickets and then I'm like, yeah, I'll find someone to give these away to. Nope. Never did. Yeah. So look, last night's game was a major, major buzzkill, a total bummer because I was saying to you guys yesterday, look, here's the reality of the situation. You either win this series and feel good about yourselves. Like, okay, look, we got it. We lost to Arizona and got no hit. We got swept by Colorado. We came home and lost two out of three to Philadelphia. Everybody thinks we're dead. But you know what? If you win this series against the Dodgers and you look at the rest of the schedule, which is very difficult, okay, at least you can feel like we're not dead, okay? We, we, we have some life to our team. The reality is, though, is that if you lose this series and if worse, you get swept in this series, you're done. And I know you can sell me all day long on the math and they're not out yet. And Cincinnati lost yesterday and Cincinnati's <laughs> playing Milwaukee and all of that may be true, but looking at the schedule and with a bunch of games against San Francisco, playing the Dodgers in LA, some tough games against Atlanta and Houston and other teams. I mean, I'm not looking at the schedule right in front of me, but I'm just telling you off the top of my head, this is a very, very tough 
last 35 games of the season. You get swept in this series. Alex, you were talking about this earlier. You could see last night after Machado had that ball that could have been a home run that was robbed by Pollock, you could see the yeah. air go out of this Padre team. Even when Profar hit the home run later in the game and he came back to the dugout, it was like this. It was like, um, yeah, here's the swag chain, but um, yeah, you know, it's not really all that exciting. You know who I'm seeing? You know who I'm seeing it in, which is kind of a bit disappointing, is in Tatis. Like Tatis just looks a little down, looks disappointed in himself, looks mad. Like in those at bats when the ump was calling, like the ump had a had a consistently bad strike zone yesterday. Yes, and just Tatis's body language just was just All off. Right. It didn't seem like that extra hype that he always has. The swag just wasn't really there he yesterday. Got, it's pretty. He, it's pretty disappointing. He got called on strike two, and he didn't swing. And remember, he, he put his head down. He squatted, and then if you remember, yeah. he he had like a checked swing, and he mm-hmm. didn't even like give anybody a chance to check with the first base hump. He just was like, check swing, pff, strike three, I'm out. He just walked back to the dugout. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. And, and here's another thing. Manny Machado, he makes a diving play for a ball. He knocks the ball down. He, he like takes his time to get up and get it because runners are moving around the bases. And then what does he do? He's like, oh, I'm hurt. Like right away, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. Comes off the field gets looked at, and then goes back out onto the field. And then if you noticed what happened in, later in the game was he makes the exact same diving play, and if you watched it really carefully, he did not extend with the glove the way he might have had he not gotten nicked up a little bit earlier in the game. So look, maybe I'm just nitpicking at this point, but you know, last night was that was a major disappointment because at 5 nothing Was it, well, though? It was expected, very frankly, but at 5 nothing I was like, Man, this thing's over. This thing's done, and they look defeated. So I wouldn't. It. I would. Looking defeated is a really interesting way to put it. I just felt like they got beat. I didn't. I didn't get this. I guess I didn't get the sense that you guys got, uh, that Alex got from Tatis, and that you got from watching Manny Machado's. Uh, I don't know other way to put it than what you described it as the lack of effort due to injury on the second attempt. I just thought that they they got beat. It looked similar to where it looked the last three or four series. They didn't really get any hits. They were able to put something on the board late in the game. At that point, it was pretty much over. And then at the last two two innings, you get a chance to kind of tie the game up, and something terrible happens. That's kind of how it's gone. Yeah, I don't want to get all I don't want to get all baseball-y oh, on you really? guys, but also baseball. this this whole like attacking the pitchers early. This strategy is not working. Not anymore. Y'all need to go back and y'all Wait. need to go back and do that jerks and profile. You need to work these counts, man. You need to get on base. If the Padres don't have runners on base, they're not going to manufacture runs. They are a low power team. You take away Tatis from this team, you don't really have a power hitter besides Manny Machado, and he's not really like this crazy forty home run kind of right. guy. So you need to get guys on base. You need to work counts. They threw seven pitches in the first inning. Urias threw seven pitches in the first inning. They had one hit through five innings. Like you have to work your counts at this team. You have to grind these, get on base somehow, earn your walks. I don't care how you get on base, but this this strategy that T- Jay Singler said that we went, we wanted it, we didn't want to fall behind. We went out, we wanted to attack them. Has that been the case for four straight series? Because it's not working. Stop last, it. Start last, working these counts. Last night, him in particular, Urias in particular, was doing a lot of first pitch strikes though. So against him, that was probably a strategy that they thought would work. But after two or three innings of it. It's not but, working. You probably need to re- refigure the strategy. Yeah, I agree. I, but this is just not. It's not just Urias though. This has been happening for, for like you said, like three or four series yes. now, where they're they're trying to go out and attack. They're trying not to fall behind early, and it's clearly not working. So stop it. Yeah. Well, hey, listen. Tonight, Walker Bueller for the Dodgers versus Blake Snell for the Padres. We need the best Blake Snell that there is. We need the guy who a couple weeks ago against Arizona on a Saturday night had 13 strikeouts. That's the oh, yeah. guy. We, I was there. Yeah, as was I. We that's the night. Blake Snell is three and zero when I have seen him pitch live this year. Let's keep it going, Blake. Me and you, Snellzilla. Mm. Maybe I was there the night before. Maybe I saw you, Darvish, get 11 strikeouts. Maybe that's the game. I you was were there when you got COVID was Saturday night. Yep. I was there Sunday afternoon, yeah. and that's when Blake Blake pitched against Bumgarner, and he went yeah, seven I was and struck too. out thirteen. That yeah. we need the Blake Snell that last year against the Dodgers in the World Series was pulled too early when everybody said this was a dominant pitching performance. <laughs> they should have left him in. That's the Blake Snell we're looking for tonight. 
Yes, for sure. All right. Hey, um, coming up, I want to talk some football. I want to talk about Jerry Jones and his opinions on COVID vaccines. I want to talk about starting quarterbacks being named around the league, um, including one of them as a rookie. I also uh, want to talk about the Rams and a move that they made yesterday. So we'll talk about all of that coming up. But I do want to talk to everybody out there who loves wagering on football. And I want to tell you about BetUS, BetUS BetUS.com. Let me tell you the reason that we're having BetUS on the show, because I've never been a football gambler. But I know how many of you out there are. And this is America's favorite sports book for over 25 years. You need a sports book that's been around for a long time one that you know you're going to get paid, and you need a sports book that offers lots of other things, MMA, golf, horse racing, which is what I prefer. Here's what you should do. Call 1-800-79-BET-US, 1-800-79-BET-US. They will actually walk you through setting up an account. And let me tell you one other thing. Nobody's going to give you this kind of a bonus because right now, if you mention 1090, you're going to get up to 200% in bonuses on your first deposit. I made a, a deposit of $100 last week to start playing on BetUS so that I could understand what it's all about as we start to talk about it on the air. And I started betting preseason football games, which I know is is not necessarily a great thing. (laughs) Alex is putting this up on the screen for you right now so you can see the website, BetUS.com. Make that first deposit. You'll get 200% bonuses on your first deposit when you use the promo code 1090. It's 200% bonuses on your first deposit. That's BetUS.com betus.com and if you need the phone number it's 1-800-79-BETUS 1-800-79-BETUS they can walk you through setting it all up but I don't think you'll need it because if I could do it online believe me you could do it online okay we're going to go from the Padres and the Dodgers and let's shift our focus to the NFL and the big story that the Rams make a trade for a somewhat veteran running back They didn't go out there and look for a Todd Gurley or an Adrian Peterson or a Frank Gore. They decided to go with a guy who they had to trade for from New England. Let's talk about that. My man, Ryan Dyrud from the LA Football Network is stopping by. What's up, guys? How we doing? We're doing really good, Ryan. How are you, pal? Excellent. Excellent. Thanks for having me on again. Always a pleasure uh, jumping on and talking with you and excited to get into this trade that just happened. And I wouldn't say it's unexpected, but uh, yeah, we'll get into it. All right, well, so here's the deal, dude. Um, I'm curious, first and foremost, last Friday was your first radio show on 1090, Friday night, Football Friday, 5 to 6, the LA Football Network, you and Frosty Rucker. How'd things go? I thought it was great. It was a blast, man. It was, it was fun to, uh, I was actually, you know, on my way back to, uh, from Santa Monica, and I was able to listen to it on the airwaves because, you know, the, the outage is just so big up the Southern California coast. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, great show, had some good guests on. And uh, I think we had a good reception, so it was a it was a good time. So I appreciate you for I, uh, helping get that going. I listened to I think fifteen minutes of the first the first um, the first half to fifteen minutes of it because I was driving around doing things. I thought it was good, man. I really enjoyed it. So congratulations. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for saying that. And yeah, it was uh yeah it was a lot of fun. So it's cool to be able to you know be on uh, kind of the same team with you guys here now at ten ninety, and hopefully we can just keep growing this uh, football show, Football Fridays, and and have a lot of fun with it and give the fans uh, what they want to hear. All right. Well, let's talk about the big story, though, today, where the Rams go out and make a move. One thing I got to say about the Rams front office, these guys, they make moves. Never boring. Right. I mean, when they when yeah. most of us thought that they were stuck with Jared Goff, they found a way out of it. In fact, I was reading an ESPN cover story today. It took me like three hours to read it because it was so damn long. <laughs> but um, it was all about how they got this deal done with Matthew Stafford. But let's go back to the deal here, Ryan. Give us what we know about Sony Michelle, the running back who was a former first rounder, as I recall, out of Georgia, went to the New England Patriots, actually won a Super Bowl with the Patriots, because I think that was the Super Bowl where the Patriots beat the Rams. Yep. Just gonna have to he check all my facts the here. Touchdown. Yeah. So so the Rams go out and make this move. What do the Rams give up to get Sony Michelle? So the the actual um the stipulations with the trade is the Rams currently give up it's called a conditional fifth and sixth round pick which essentially means once they get the compensatory pick for John Johnson signing with the Browns this offseason, which will end up being most likely a fourth round pick, the Rams get that fifth and sixth back and that fourth round compensatory gets sent to New England. So essentially it's a fourth round pick for Sonny Michelle, who is in the last year of his deal. So then the Rams are expected to let him walk next year because they'll be getting Cam Akers back. 
And if Sony Michelle signs elsewhere for a decent contract, they would actually get a compensatory pick for him. So it could end up being a wash all around. And they'd get a rental for one year to be a complimentary back to Daryl Henderson, which is good for both teams. The, the Patriots get a pick on a guy that they were probably going to cut anyway. And the Rams end up getting a player that can hopefully be serviceable and give a break to Daryl Henderson. And then maybe they still get something in return next offseason. So it, it could work out really well for both teams. Was there wow. Nobody was there available nobody available just when like, just as a free agent? Like, why why go out and acquire Sonny Michelle when there is other like name running backs out there? If you're I mean, just it's a great be a question. To a back? Yeah, you have guys like Duke Johnson out there, Le'Veon Bell, uh, the aforementioned Todd Gurley, which was never going to happen, but he's out there. Frank Gore, uh, and they could just right. go sign off the streets. And like I said, it's been pretty widely rumored that Sonny Michelle was probably going to be cut anyway at the end of camp because the Patriots just have a loaded backfield and he hasn't really worked out in their system. Um, but I think the Rams just really liked what he gives, what he brings, excuse me, the versatility, the the kind of one-two punch that him and Daryl Henderson could be, the upside of him being a first-round pick, still only like 25 years old. Um, and then I think the biggest thing to it, though, is Thomas Brown, the Rams running back coach, was Sony Michelle's running back coach at Georgia for one of his best seasons as a sophomore there. So there was obviously some... Um, nuance and some knowledge there. And the Rams have shown over the years that they really like correlating past relationships, how they do coaching hires and how they sign free agents and trade for players. So I think that's what went into it. But I think it's, they didn't wait because they knew they were low on the waiver wire. Um, it was going to be hard to be, be able to sign him. So they just went out, gave some picks, made sure he was their guy and, and they can bring him to camp early and get a, a week or two in before the regular season actually starts. I find it to be very interesting because I feel like the Rams had their choice of available veteran free agent guys and didn't have to give up anything to bring one in. Mm -hmm. And to your point, Ryan, they you know will be essentially renting Sony Michelle for a year because you figure Cam Akers will come back the following year. And um, I just find it interesting that they they went out to make this move like they targeted this guy. They're like, you know what? He can run. He can be part of the passing game. Um, he's a winner. We know his game. Let's go get him. Let's give something up for him. And and look, you're talking about a former first round talent. I th I think it's a really good move. Yeah, I think it'll work out being good. And and like I said, when you were right in the beginning, he was the the lone touchdown scored in that Super Bowl against them. So obviously, there's that taste in their mouth. But just a guy that they think uh, you know he averaged 5.7 yards per carry last year. So he was while he was not the featured guy, he was efficient. And so now now it'll see or now we'll see how the pairing of him and Daryl Henderson works out. And if it's a, a true good match, because obviously they have Xavier Jones and Jake Funk, who I know they're high on, but we haven't seen a ton of flash for them yet in preseason. And then with their loss of Raymond Clay, they were just down to two running backs. So they had to add someone. I mean, there had to be someone. And I think this was just a guy that they've been targeting. I think Sean McVay said in his presser, or maybe his lesson that they've actually been targeting since the beginning of training camp. And so when it became an option and available, they went after it. Is Daryl Henderson's thumb okay? Is Daryl Henderson's thumb okay? Or is nope, it, slight is sprain. It that minor, he was actually there actually at practice yesterday with just a, you know, a, a heavy glove on, not doing contact, but he won't miss any time. He'll be back for sure by week one. So, luckily, right. I mean, that could have been a huge disaster if they lost him too. Right, right. We're talking to Ryan Dyrud from the LA Football Network. You can hear Ryan's show here on 1090 on Friday evenings at 5 p.m. So, um, okay, so the the Rams go out and make a move. They get another running back. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I, I'm still like pumping the brakes on my Rams hype. You know, I, I want them to succeed. I want Matthew Stafford to succeed. I'm just, I'm still not a hundred percent sure yet if Stafford is the answer to what they were missing. I, I suppose what I'm saying is, is I, I was reading this story again from ESPN this morning and McVay wanted a veteran quarterback. They never let Jared Goff become the leader, if you will. It was still McVay's team. I feel like McVay is ready to hand off leadership to Stafford. I mean, it's just it's just my impression. It's just a perception. What do you think about all that, Ryan? Yeah, it's a good point. And it's it's kind of a mixed bag of how people feel about it. But it does seem like he was wanting to give like it, he's talked to him before about he was wanting to give more responsibility to Jared, but just never really felt comfortable with that. And I don't know if that's a knock on Jared Goff or just McVay trying to micromanage too much, but he feels that with Stafford, Definitely. he can give him more and take more off his plate and kind of be the coach on the field that Goff was never able to be under the McVay era. So I know they're excited about it. We'll see if it works. The big concern, we don't we don't have to get too deep into it, is more about this offensive line that 
had a huge move just last week, and they're still trying to shuffle and figure out who their starting five are going to be. What do you mean? Tell us about the huge move this week. What do you mean? So oh. all off season, basically since Austin Blythe signed with the Chiefs, Austin Corbett, who was the starting guard last year and a very good guard at that, they had come out and said Austin Corbett is going to be our center. He was at no TAs. He was at mini camp. He was at for the first two and a half weeks of training camp, and they were going to have uh, Bobby Evans be their guard to take over for Corbett. Well, unfortunately, the Bobby Evans experience was so bad at guard that they needed to move Corbett back to his rightful spot at guard. And so then now they're forced to put Brian Allen at center, who they drafted in the fourth round a few years ago, has battled some injuries, missed last year with COVID and stuff like that. And so now they have last week at camp, and they decided they'd change their starting center to this guy that hasn't played since 2019. So they feel good about it. I think they have to, but uh, a lot of us are a little leery when you're making that change the last week at camp when it's been a different guy the entire time. Yeah. All right. Let's see how that plays out. All right. Well, we'll be listening on Friday night. Ryan Dirud on Friday at 5 p.m. LA Football Network. And uh, Ryan, give a shout out to your website for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, so yeah, the LA F it's LAFBnetwork.com where you can find all of our podcasts, all of our articles, uh, a bunch of cited debates up there as well. Got one right now actually on uh, Cam Akers and how you feel about or not Cam Akers about Sony Michelle and how you feel about the move. And uh, yeah, tune in this Friday on 1090. I have a uh, SEC guy coming on to talk about Sony Michelle and what he did at Georgia. So what Rams fans can expect from Sony Michelle. So it should be a fun show. So thanks again, guys, though. Appreciate you as always. All right, man. Ryan Dyroot stopping by. All right, stick around, everybody. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios along with Grande and the Brown Man. This is Kaplan and crew. And I want to get into Jerry Jones and his strong opinions about vaccinations. Hang out. Great friends, it is a Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. I will see you all tonight at Petco Park. Last night was an amazing crowd at Petco Park. It really was. And I say it like that because I was watching it on television and I saw a lot of Padre Brown. I saw, not surprisingly, tons of Dodger blue. And because the Dodgers had this five-zip lead, I could hear that buzz from the Dodger fans, you know, even when Pollock went up and made that amazing catch and robbed that, that home run from Manny Machado, you could hear the Dodger fans in Petco park. And if you remember what happened yesterday in the, in the earlier part of the afternoon, this plane, this little tiny plane lands crash lands on the five freeway. Thankfully, nobody was hurt real bad. Thankfully nobody died, but seriously, did you guys happen to see the traffic jam that this created because people took pictures from like, you know, I don't know, call it three or 400 cars back. They're completely stopped on the freeway and they got out of their cars and took pictures. And they were like, dude, it is a blank show out here on the freeway. I don't know if anybody was in that traffic, but I know I saw a lot of Dodger fans on Twitter saying this is the way the Padres are going to keep the Dodger fans from getting inside Petco Park. <laughs> but it was crazy. The traffic jam that was created on the five south and really on the five north. My daughter goes to high school um, about six miles from my house. She said it took her an hour and change to get home because. So was this north or south of your south house? south of my house. So. Yeah. Oh man, if, if we were that there, we would have been oh, stuck yeah. then. Oh yeah. Take a look at this right here. Alex yeah, is putting it up on that. the screen. Look at this. Hey, look, you got to give credit to the pilot, right? I mean, sometimes these pilots are like, uh, we're going down. Like that guy that landed in the, uh, in the Hudson river in New York, Sully, Sullivan, Sonny, mm -hmm. uh, Sullivan. Yeah. But, but just Sully one, Sullivan. one thing about this, this picture that cracks me up. If you just put it back up on the screen real quick, take a look at the cars that are already South of the plane. Those guys right there, they made it, <laughs> you know, like, like in their, yep. in their minds, they're like, what's going on behind us in my rear view mirror. There's a plane down there. Um, but these guys right here, they're like, oh man, is there any way? Why is everybody going North stop? That's though. regular traffic, like, brother. Who, that, is, well, that is regular North is traffic. I, you know, though, Brown, I don't know, man. I mean, you're driving North. And if you look, just put back on the screen, if you don't mind, Alex, if you put it back up on the screen, there's a car on the northbound side that looks like it got clipped by the, by the, the, the wing of the plane, this car right here, this, this blue Honda or so it seems, I mean, I don't know that person pulled over. Well, what, that person's a jerk. If he got clipped and stopped everybody, what time did this happen? This happened in the middle of the afternoon. I want to so like say four. No, no, it was earlier than that. I think it was earlier mm. than that. It was more like around like 
one or two o'clock in yeah, the afternoon. Because then once the firefighters got there and the ambulance, they stopped traffic. Oh, um, look at this going south. No oh. thanks. Yeah, they completely stopped traffic because cars were just going around the plane. That's what I would have done. When, yeah. When the ambulance got there, they stopped everybody from going through. Yeah, look at that traffic. Oh my God. Look, man, if I was if I was in that line, dog, I'd have been so pissed. Listen, nobody's hurt. The, the road, turn the plane around. Give us two lanes. Let us get by. I would have lost my mind on those folks, man. No, no gasoline got spilt. Nobody died. The parts weren't scattered all over. It wasn't like some doomsday crash, some kamikaze crash. The guy landed on top of a car. The people in the car were fine. The the pilot was fine. Let's scoot this baby over here. Let us get by. <laughs> man, y'all y'all making a mountain out of a molehill, brother. Scoot this thing got yeah. to the side. I got to go. Sorry, man. It's just that it's highly unusual that a plane lands on the five freeway. I'm sorry, man. We just got to, you know, get the firefighters here, get the cops here. And for those of you that are stuck in traffic, hey, look, I'm waving to all of you guys up in Oceanside because the traffic was just completely stopped i mean and right there crazy. here you there's there's nowhere to go there's no release valves because even if they take the streets and then try to go down the one-on-one that oh, no. gets packed up oh, oh, really no. really fast you don't even understand you ready so this is just a side story so i had to meet a buddy of mine i had to i was very happy to see a buddy of mine yesterday uh browner you would love this guy by the way his name is steven bardo and if you go back and you look at like the 1986 Illinois basketball team. He was part of that same team with like Kendall Gill. Uh, oh, I love and, Kendall Gill. Yeah, and there were a bunch of other NBA players on that team. They wound up losing to Michigan. I believe that was the Steve Fisher year that they won the national championship, I think. Hmm. Um, they lost to Michigan. I don't remember if it was in the tournament, in the NCAA tournament or the, or the Big Ten tournament. Anyway, whatever. So I was meeting with my buddy Steven yesterday in Solana Beach. But I already knew that this plane had crashed. I could hear the ambulances. I could hear the firefighters from my house going to this to the, the scene. And I was on the 101 and Lomas Santa Fe Road. Dude, you would have thought it was opening day at Del Mar with 45,000 people. It was jam-packed. Everybody had gotten off the freeway, probably north of Lomas Santa Fe, gotten onto the 101, and were heading south trying to avoid the traffic on the five, it was jam-packed wall-to-wall. I, I wonder how the 15 where, was. Where were they going to – the 15 is too far to get across to. No, no, people like, were doing that. People people were either coming down from L.A., they were taking like the 10 across – because they were hearing about this, they were taking the 10 across to the 15, or, or right where they could have done it in North, in North County, San Diego. Nice. Um so here's the story. Woman whose car broke planes landing on Del Mar Freeway <laughs> speaks out. A Texas couple was enjoying the views of San Diego County while on vacation celebrating their wedding anniversary when suddenly their rental car was slammed from behind, not by another vehicle, but by a small airplane. Sarah Tribbett told NBC7 News, I think we broke the fall. The plane didn't hit the concrete. It hit our car. We were just oh driving God. down the freeway and all of a sudden something hit us really hard. And the glass just shattered everywhere. We're both okay. It was definitely an experience. Oh, my God. Can you put the picture up that you had last? Um, because I was yapping over it about yeah. meeting up with a friend and, you know, the, the jam traffic. Look at this. So it did hit that car that we were that we were looking at, the Honda. Oh. That is the car it hit. Oh, it hit the blue Honda, which was headed northbound. Yeah. It, it looks like the wing clipped it. Mm. And that prevented the, the plane from slamming into the concrete. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But again, wow. no. This is no, the girl. This is the girl it hit. Oh my no, god! Look at all the traffic behind yeah. it. <laughs> no large spills. There's no dead bodies. Let's go, man. Move around. Oh, Move get around. Out of here, man. No, Move everybody on. has to. What like, are you gonna do? You it know? is. It is funny. Though, like anytime that like, like ambulance or police are called, there's always gonna be some investigation, right? Like they, they gotta investigate everything. Mm -mm. Let right? me buy. Let Ooh. me buy. Ooh, there's video. Okay, hold on one second. Oh, let's take a If you're show. watching our show, if you're watching our show, this is a this is a great video. This plane traffic's flowing. It's not stopped. And okay. you can see this plane landing here on the left Whoa. side. Whoa! 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 Yeah. Let's take a look at this one more time. This plane is right over the freeway, and the guy who's shooting the video is heading north. He must have seen this thing coming Whoa. down. Wow! 
Oh my! I got. I would love to see it one more time. I got. I got to see it again because I'm. You know, it's kind of like when we analyze fight videos. I gotta see it enough times to like look at all the different stuff. You're whoever took this video. This is so smart. You can see the plane coming down, and it's it's literally going to try and land on the five. And if it wasn't for that little gray car that's in the way, get out of the way. You can man. see the you can see the wing on the right hand side the, facing it pop up. It kind of pop oh, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. a like a plume of smoke came up. Wow! Wow! That's a great video Good about that stuff. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what the daily sabat is. This. But... Oh my god, man! See? Do you guys remember a few a few years ago? I remember I was driving to mm -hmm. Oxnard, and this same a same exact thing happened at the John Wayne Airport. Except that plane actually crashed and caught fire, Ooh. and luckily the pilot escaped. And I remember literally like two hours later, I drove by the five. Literally, you know how you can see John Wayne to your left when you're going yeah. north. Yes, you saw the entire median just blacked out of charcoal, and one of the lights engulfed in flames too. Like that could have been really just as bad as the the one yesterday could have been as bad as that. I mean, it, it's great that no one was hurt. There were no fatalities. There was no real damage done to anybody physically. They were probably a little scared, but they didn't even see what happened because they hit him from behind. So no one really suffered anything negative from it. So I mean that's always good and positive. Oh my god! No one really got hurt. Oh my god! Now we're taking a look at uh, from CBS eight in San Diego the aerial shot of the plane. Look at that and, 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 and but here's the thing: look at the um. The, you wonder about the traffic. There are firefighters on the northbound five. There are firefighters all over the southbound five. And while you know you might have impatient people like Browner in the back going, "Let me buy," let me fire, move, bro. Firefighters are like, "Listen, this is a slightly unusual circumstance here. We have a small plane down on the freeway." Well, that's a pretty good piece of piloting, too. I don't know much about what buying, is the. But that's uh, good. Uh, listen, no, no, it's not. What no, is it's not? not. Here's not that why. Good? No, here's really, why. you know, you know a lot about piloting, really, <laughs> really, doctor. Here, here, here's why. Classic. Let me let me tell you some. We've down, we've been down, up and down this freeway plenty of times. You know, he could have veered a little to the right, landed right there on that uh, that, that driving, long drive. What they call that? The what they marsh? call it when you hit the golf balls? Driving range. No, no. Okay, but go back to the aerial shot, though, Alex. If you go back to the aerial shot, for those of you that are listening, you'll have to come watch the show on YouTube. But if you go back to that Channel 8 KFMB aerial shot, um, this plane look, – look, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're, look at all that grass. Look at all that grass over there. He could have landed that thing off the freeway. He just – Listen, man. The freeway looks Too like better. A, no, no. The freeway looks like a pretty nice uh, landing strip, you know. Yeah, but there's humans yeah. on it. Aren't they trained to there's land humans in the freeway? On it. Isn't isn't? Aren't they trained? Land, uh, but aren't they bro, trained to land over there? Because they like they specifically. Oh, I've oh read now, yo, oh, now you a pilot coach? They, <laughs> no, oh, I've just read this coach. before that the that the exits, really? the exits. The bridges that go over freeways are separate enough so planes can make emergency landings. Oh, really? Who told you like, that? Like, they're trained to do this. Where really? you read that at? Facebook? I think he wrote it down and then he read it. Yeah. Yeah, you ain't read that no way. Okay. Other than what you just wrote it. <laughs> so, you know, you call, you call yourself Dr. John Browner. I'm FAA Alex Padilla, okay? <laughs> Ooh. Okay. I'll tell you what, man. My bad, yeah. dog. My bad, my bad, baby. It's not FDA approved. It's FAA approved, okay? My that was a dog. fantastic landing. All right. All right. All right. Well, I, 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 I rest my case. All right. Very good. All right. Hey, listen, Um, let me say this. I want to talk about some other stuff because that, that plane landing on the freeway, many Dodger fans were accusing the Padres of this is the Padres way of keeping Dodger fans out of Petco Park. Well, the traffic eventually broke. The plane was taken off the freeway. The firefighters all went back to their their stations, oh, and free and, and, my answer. and traffic was flowing. <laughs> and believe me, listen, the the Padres may have tried to keep Dodger fans out of Petco Park, but it was unsuccessful because there were a whole bunch of them there last night making a lot of noise. What was the answer you found, Grande? I was about to, I was about to ask you guys, what kind of tow truck does this take to get the plane out? And I got my answer: it takes semi trucks. Whoa! Got to get semi trucks to lift it and then place it on a big old flatbed and get it out could you imagine browner we're watching this video right now the the crane truck is perpendicular to the freeway facing west wow. towards the ocean and this flatbed is coming in and it's the the plane is lifted up and they're going to drop it on this flatbed could you imagine browner stuck in this traffic Going, mm -hmm. come oh on, man. Gosh. Come you on, know man. what I would have done? There's the emergency <laughs> lane to the right. Let there me we get go. through there. Mm. There we go. I'm going right on that shoulder, bro. Vroom. So I'll talk about I got places to be. <laughs> 
<laughs> so my other question is, do they then like dismantle the wings or then do you have to have like crazy wide load flags on the side? I don't Definitely know, man. Wide load no? flags. This plane is total, dude. Yeah. What if it what if you go too fast on the freeway and it take off? Huh? Man, you know nothing about piloting. Because it's a plane. Man, you know nothing about piloting. Now you, you need to stop. That's you how you, stop. That's what how you, you get what you mean? take off when you drive fast. What you mean? It's a freeway. You think, you you think, it's, at least you think 65 miles per hour? You think 65 miles per hour fast enough to get a plane going? Dude, Listen, it's got one of the wings is ripped off. under 65 miles an hour. It's got no wing. Listen, man, y'all don't. Listen, listen, y'all got, y'all got no face. Listen, yeah. man, y'all got no they face. Got no yeah. face, bro. <laughs> got no face, bro. Man. That thing could easily go in a circle. Dude, stick. Hey, stick to doctoring. Yeah, really, okay? really. Go back to surgery. Stick to doctoring. Let, let me worry about the flights yeah. over here. All right, man. All right, you know what? Um, Brittany Erton's going to be coming up here shortly. We're going to talk about the summer at Del Mar, but we're also going to talk about the Dodgers and the Padres because she's a Dodger fan down from LA, and she was there last night. But Alex, do we have time right now? Can we? Get to the highlight of the day, man. Can we do that right here? Yes. Right now? All right. It's time for it. the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Promo code is Grande at Tori Holistic. So you go to CapitalCrew.com, click that Tori Holistic banner. And when you spend a minimum of $75 and you put the promo code Grande at checkout, you get 20% off. You go to the store, just show them the screen, and you'll also get 20% off live at the store. Uh, Ruthie texted me earlier, Scott. She texted us mm -hmm. saying that Tori Holistics is currently hiring full and part-time cannabis consultants as well. You must be 21 and over, uh, but go to Tori Holistics if you're looking for a career in the holistic game. You know what? I'm glad she did send us that text because, listen, I know it's an ongoing problem in many different industries where um, great companies are looking for excellent employees. And um, people are going to be going back to work here real soon. I don't know a whole lot about the unemployment benefits, but I keep hearing from people that, um, you know, the extra money that was being given through unemployment is getting ready to evaporate. And when that happens, people who have chosen to collect the unemployment and not go back to work because they can make more money not working, they're going to be going back to work. And by the way, no judgment on that. Okay, listen, I get it, man. You do you. But if you're looking for a really good job, and you happen to love the cannabis industry and you like testing products and you like talking about the products and you like meeting people and you're a people person, um, a job at Toriolistics would be a great thing. So stop on by and uh, say, hey, I'm here looking for a gig. I like weed. There you go. The uh, highlight of the day is the Baltimore Orioles. I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, they have not won a game since <laughs> August 2nd. <laughs> They are in the middle of a 19-game wow. losing streak. 19-game losing streak. August 2nd, they were 38 and 67. They are now 38 and 86. Uh, last night, they were playing the Los Angeles Angels, LA's other team. When Shohei Otani came up to bat mm -hmm. on an eight-to-one lead already, the Angels have an eight-to-one lead, and the Orioles decide to intentionally walk him. Why is this my highlight of the day? Because the Oriole fans, who have suffered through 19 straight losses, just wanted to see Otani hit. <laughs> so much so that they booed their own team. <laughs> well, I guess I should say Listen, he doesn't get a fans. chance. He does get a chance to swing. They're booing him. They're booing Baltimore for walking Otani. The home fans want to see him hit. I don't blame them. This team's lost 18 in a row. They came to watch something. They wanted to see Otani play tonight. See, Dude. maybe those fans in Baltimore would have got the home run from AJ Pollock. They're, they sound ruthless. Dude, listen to the and I like listen them. to the voice that's calling the game. By the way, it's eight to one at the time. It's the top of the third. Bases mm. are loaded, and mm. you decide to walk Otani rather than the possibility of him hitting a grand slam, and now you're down 12 to 1. Well, I have a question for the Orioles. What do you have to lose? You've already lost 18 straight games. If you lose 19, by the way, you're down seven runs in the top of the third. Who cares if it's 12 to 1 or 8 to 1? But if you listen to that voice, that is the voice of Matt Vaskersian. I wonder how Matt Vaskersian is doing this. We've not talked to him throughout the baseball season. I'd be fascinated to hear from him how he's doing this because – he was a studio host in New York at MLB Network, and then he was doing play-by-play mm -hmm. uh, -play on Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, and then this year he took over as the top play-by-play -play announcer for the Angels. So I really wonder, is, is Matt in a studio in New York 
watching a feed of the Angels game, or is Matt traveling with the Angels and not studio hosting? Well, pa- Don and Mud are not traveling still for the Padres, so I don't know if if they're even allowed to travel. Man, to Matt got that games. super internet, boy. He got that Cox. You got that super Cox Wi Fi. What do they call it? Uh, Giga Blast, bro. That, that Giga Blast. It really is amazing how Matt Vaskersian, in sort of an under the radar kind of way, went from being Has well, right, but he also was he was so well liked in San Diego when the Padres were so marginal, you know, and then became you know he got recruited first to the Cubs. That didn't work out because the Padres wouldn't let him out of his contract. Then he went to MLB Network, and now he's back to calling games. Only this time for the Angels. And you know, it's listen. I take a lot of heat from from listeners at times. Because, you know, for 20 years, I was on the radio in San Diego and drove the bandwagon to try and keep the Chargers in town. And now I've got this radio show up in L.A. on on 710. Um, But, you know, a lot of media personalities, whether they want to uh, move to the bigger market or for whatever other reason, they wind up going to L.A. I didn't run to L.A. I still live in San Diego. But did you guys happen to see that Kyle Kraska, the former Channel 8 sportscaster, who for 20 plus years did you know charger <clears throat> post game shows did you guys see that kraska just took over as the sports director at fox 11 in la did you guys see that I yeah i did not see that i knew nope. he was gone from eight well right he left eight his contract ended they didn't renew him he was doing like some stuff on facebook where he was just trying to stay engaged with the san diego sports fans he was doing like essentially a sports report on tv on facebook and then that's smart no, it is smart because he saw like somebody else like Jody Kodesh who left as a weather person do the exact same thing and she was very successful. He also and the girl from KUSI. Oh, right. I don't remember followers her name offhand, but I know who you're talking about. Um, and Kyle and I talked quite a bit about, you know, new mediums and so on. But Kyle has now left San Diego to go to LA, which by the way, he was in LA at one point in his career earlier, but he went to LA to take over as the sports director for Fox Eleven. Now it's not like he wanted to leave. It's it's just that, just that you know Shout nobody out. was willing to pay him here in town. You know, so, good for him. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I said. All right, stick are around, people, everybody. Are people gonna be mad at him because he went to LA? I, I I don't know. Maybe they will be. I don't know. <laughs> um, stick around. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Let's get back to the Dodgers and the Padres because Brittany Erton from TVG and NBC Sports. She's a Dodger fan, hanging in San Diego for the summer, covering Del Mar, and she was at the game last night. Brittany Erton will join us next. Hey, great friends. It is a Wednesday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, broadcasting on the airwaves of the Mightier 1090, streaming on our YouTube uh, channel, and everybody getting involved in our YouTube chat. Make sure you give a thumbs up, come down below, visit with our sponsors, leave a comment, lots to do on our YouTube channel. And tonight we will be broadcasting on Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara, Channel 118 Palos Verdes, Channel 118 Orange County. So we're on radio right now. We're on YouTube right now. We'll be on TV tonight and you can get us anytime you want. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Amazon Music, any of the places where you get your audio podcast, that's where you can find us. So fellas, Browner, Grande, uh, one of our favorites is back. And by the way, by special request of Coach Steve Bogner, who runs the gas station at the Costco in San Marcos. And Coach Steve, I'm sending a shout out and I'm sending a bunch of love to you and your family. Guys, Coach Steve's been a longtime listener. He's a huge Brittany Erton fan. And uh, here's the thing. He's dealing with a lot in his real life. His daughter is very ill. And I just want to say to Coach Steve, I'm sending you a whole bunch of love. And, uh, and here's one of your all-time favorites. Brittany Yurton is back on Kaplan and crew. Hey, Britt. Hey, guys. Uh, first and foremost, Coach Steve, thinking about your daughter, sending lots of love as well there. he's uh, He's been such a support. But, guys, it's been ages. But now I know I can find you literally everywhere tonight, right? Well, you know, Brittany, uh, back in the day when, when me, you, and Alex were working together and we were doing our Saturday morning Del Mar show, that was just radio. And then all of a sudden, two years ago, the radio station went belly up and we were off the air and we didn't know what we were going to do. And we got into podcasting and podcasting eventually turned into podcasting and then it turned back into radio and then it turned into adding TV. And then it was all these audio podcast platforms. And before you knew it, we were like, we just need to be everywhere. We can't just be in one place anymore. So here we are. 
But you have to evolve with the times, right? I mean, have you enjoyed how it has turned into every single layer of media? Guys, uh, what do you guys think? Do we do we like that we're on radio, on TV, on YouTube, on all these audio podcast platforms? I, I was showing a buddy of mine yesterday, and then it extends beyond there, Brittany, because then you cut up clips and you put them on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. So, I mean, our goal is to do this. Here's our goal. Anywhere you've got one of these, anywhere you've got a phone in your hands, we want to be accessible. You've got one? Great. You can have us anywhere you want us. What do you guys, Perfect. Rondé Browner, what do you guys think? It's a good question. A wise man once said, the more the merrier. Really? Mm -hmm. This is wow. true. See that my wise man said say that. Less is more. But I don't think so in this medium, right? <laughs> no, that don't work in media. No, no, no. You can't do less is more in media. Homeless. Broadcasting from a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so Brittany, very true oh uh, was that, that a wise woman case. said that, that must have been the case all right i want to talk to you about a couple of different things this is why we asked you to come on the show so let me start off with the uh the most timely thing which is um i saw you last night posting from petco park yep you're pointing at your la dodger hat i know you're a big dodger fan so give me first impressions of what happened last night at petco Early stages were good. You know, Will Smith got 11. He always comes in in clutch times. Uh, Julio was fantastic to get out of some pretty nerve-wracking moments. But then, as the Dodgers always do, they love to make you sweat in the eighth and ninth innings, especially when, and I love the guy, Kenley Jansen. He, we used to say in Kenley we trust. Now it's in Kenley we get a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. um, but they pulled it off. You know, they really did and got out of some sticky situations. I think when we had the two run home run by the Padres, um, I think in the eighth inning, maybe I, I got, I got pretty nervous that you guys were going to make a comeback, but, uh, stood strong. And now we've got Bueller on the mound tonight. So it was fun. I have to say Petco park, best stadium I've been to. What did you think when, uh, Manny Machado hits what looks like it's going to be a home run to left field and AJ Pollock goes up and pulls it back down. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. What did you think of that moment? Because then you got to hear what everybody else thinks. Robbing the home run. I loved it, but I'll be honest. I was sitting down and I thought, okay, this is out. So no way. And then I stood up once I saw AJ Pollock running towards the fence. So everyone's on their feet waiting to see if he could catch it. It was epic. We saw Bellinger do something like that in um, either the World Series or the NLCS last year. It's awesome when you see some like athletic ability at that level. I know it wasn't great for Padres fans. And uh, Manny Machado probably wasn't too happy about that. But big fan. <laughs> All right, let we, me, uh, yeah, let, as a Dodger let me have fan, Alex though, and John as, jump as, in. Yeah, here. We, we have thoughts here. All we right. have thoughts. Because as a Dodger fan, you know how ruthless you guys can be out in the bleachers at Dodger Stadium. No chance that ever happens in Dodger Stadium. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, no, there's no, no chance, chance that Padres rob a home run? Because the fans wouldn't allow it. Uh, when they're so close to the action like that, the Padre fans just basically like just they just like opened up a red carpet for AJ to jump up into their area and just steal that home run from them. I grew up going to Dodger Stadium. That does if that's in right field, you know whoever our right fielder is might leave in a stretcher. Like you don't come into the to their territory. So are you saying that you? I I feel like you should be more upset with your fans then. Yes. Oh, Thank yes. you. Yeah, yeah, we are. Blaming. There yeah. we go. Yes. That's what we've been saying all day. Okay. They got to suck it up. Fans. Okay. Yeah, man. One hundred percent. First I was trying ball, to make a comparison. Brittany, these people had their eyes closed trying to catch the home run ball. How the I hell are you going to catch a ball with your eyes closed? We Look at this. That's an embarrassment. We embarrassed today because of these two morons who don't know you got to catch a ball with your eyes open. Look at this. That's embarrassing. And the best part is the guy with his eyes open is using his phone to try and capture the moment Dude. and capture the ball. How yeah. do we not see the video from this guy's angle, you know, like how has this not gone viral yet? Look at the girl, Alex, if you, if you pull back a little bit, um, look at the girl in the Padres yellow t-shirt mouth is wide open. Eyes are shut. Look at the kid on the right side. <laughs> his eyes are completely closed. And Brittany, the guy in the middle looks like his hands are a clam. Looks like he's about to make this catch. His face is covered, so he'll never be humiliated. But AJ Pollock's glove is right in front of him. And then just look at Pollock at the bottom of the screen. Look how he's looking up. Of all these people, there's one guy who's got his eyes open. He's the guy who made the catch. 
<laughs> and Jessica got it on video too. And there, see, so this brings up the discussion of how you feel about catching a fly ball. There were a lot of fly balls, foul balls, especially going into the stands last night. Me, I'll be totally upfront. I'm ducking. I'm going straight down like this. I don't want to get hit in the head. But would you guys be able to catch a foul ball? One handed. No, here we go. One handed. See? Here no we glove. go. One handed. Stop no it. Now hold on. Now hold on. Brittany. That gets his nails done. He's not putting his mine. hand up to catch okay. a ball. I don't have my nails done <laughs> because I bite done. my nails all day long. But as somebody who coached many, Ew. many years of Little League, I'll catch a ball and take the, the few minutes of pain. Now, wait. Now, wait. Hold on. Eyes Brittany. open. Brittany. Brittany, I have to ask your opinion on this. <laughs> Alex. That's right. Eyes open. Alex, put up on the yeah. screen the picture yes. of the gentleman. That's to the right of AJ Pollock. Oh, the old dude. And then Brittany, opine on this if you don't mind. So you got the kid who's got his eyes closed. You got Pollock who's got his eyes open. Pollock is making this incredible play. And there's a guy wearing a Padre hat, and he's a grown man, and he's got his baseball glove. Alex, tell Brittany your opinion about grown men with baseball gloves at, at Major League Games. You don't do it. You the, the Bringing your glove to a game is for children. When you're a grown adult... You have a cocktail, a beer in your hand, and then the other hand is free. You don't bring a glove to a stadium as an adult. That is a rule of mine, and it's also a lifelong dream of mine to catch a foul ball with a beer so then I can chug and come out on the big screen. Brittany, what do, you think about, what do you think about grown men with baseball gloves at Major League Baseball games? Are you in on that or are you out on that? Um, I'm out on that. I'm with Alex here. I think catch it with your bare hands Thank you. or catch it with your empty beer cup, whatever you need to do. I saw, okay, here would be an exception to the rule. If you have a young child with you and he brought his mitt, you brought your mitt, you're trying to, you're trying to catch it for him. Okay, great. I can get behind that young kid. But if you're by yourself, uh, or with a group of other adult men, yeah, leave it at home. You know, you don't need <laughs> like tonight, Scott, we're both going like, Scott, you're going with friends, I think. I'm going with my fiance. If we show up to with gloves, look like a bunch of losers. Oh, totally. dude. You know what, man? Y'all, y'all too much of me. What's wrong with a man being prepared at a baseball game in case an emergency happens? Like, I oh, this oh. is awesome. Oh. I love, I love when we, we love it when Browder's about to make a point. We love it when Browder's about to make a point, and then he freezes up. It's like our favorite thing on the show. <laughs> It really is. And it always happens when he's about to say something wrong. Yeah, you did. It like it like the internet saves you, dude. Right. Like he like instead of him calling me and Alex a hater, like, man, you guys are haters for for you know beating up on guys who bring gloves to games. This guy's the ultimate hater. He calls Shohei Otani O phony. Excuse me? That's what he calls him. Yeah. Why? Yeah. What's oh oh Brittany Brittany, you want a piece of this too? You can <laughs> get do. it on I this love, Otani I'd bastard to too. Hear it. It's, it's know, 2021. It's Everybody it's fair game out here. Explain why explain why Otani's o phony. Just explain this to Brittany. Listen, when you need Otani to do something in meaningful times, where he at? It's easy to sweep up the room when everybody gone. It's easy to look good. It's like you loud in an empty room. That's what Otani is. Otani is very he, loud in an empty room. He, you put been, Otani in a room with some other people, stop. he vanishes. He gets small. He's been saying that if Otani's so great. Why aren't the Angels any good? That's what he's terrible. Saying. You can't have one man leading the entire team. I mean, okay, they've got more than one. They've got two. They've got Mike Trout too. But I, that's two people. Look at how long it took See, the Dodgers Brit to be a great team. They have to have a full, encompassing roster. Let me give you another piece of of, of Browner. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what he says about Aaron Donald? No, no. I want to talk to her about all of your different hatred. You know what he says about Aaron Donald? Let that me explain Aaron this Donald, first to Brittany. That Aaron Donald, I feel like he's going to freeze again. No, yeah, hopefully he does. That Aaron, he, he's always beating up on Aaron Donald on air because Overrated. Aaron Donald went in and saved his pals from a street fight, and 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 Browner makes it seem like he was the instigator in a street fight. Am I wrong here, Mr. Hater? You mean that time Aaron Donald jumped that dude in the alley? Brittany, let me explain why I say this about old phony. <laughs> okay. Okay? <laughs> Scott thinks the world of this man and then they say oh because he pitches and he hits so if you pitching and hitting i'm expecting w's out of you that's all you playing more than the average person and you got more of an impact on the game than anybody's had since Babe Ruth because you pitching and you hitting so i need wins brady i need wins and, and, i can't and argue too, that if he is playing more than the rest of the team maybe i can't argue that mm -hmm. and aaron donald oh, jumped that man in that alley we all he know did that not jump that man come on man Y'all know what Aaron hater. Donald did. Just a total hater. Hey, Brittany, are you going to uh, are you going to go back down to Petco Park tonight to see your Dodgers take on our Padres? 
Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Walker Bueller on the mound. He's a big horse racing fan. That'll be fun to watch. And against Blake Snell, who do we think he was taking yeah. out of the World Series too early? I mean, is that the argument? Yes. Which, I'm <laughs> yes. okay with it. I'm Which, okay with it. We came, we came home champions. <laughs> I mean, you Which won. Which t-shirt so. should I wear tonight, Brittany? Jump in here. Should I wear my swag chain? I want, should I wear my yeah. swag chain t-shirt? Or Browner wants me to wear. Browner, you still got the other t-shirt hanging around? Oh, yeah. What you mean? Oh, Browner Listen, wants Brittany, me to wear this one. What, well, Brittany, what he should be wearing is who he really is. See, now he's trying to hide behind his, his San Diego residency. This, who, this is what he really should be wearing. Oh, I love that. But no, I think I want to see the swag chain. And I want the story behind the swag chain. Are they putting an actual, you know, SD swag chain around the players' necks when they hit a home run? I mean, what's, yeah. what's the story? Yeah, the story is when you're up 5 nothing, like the Dodgers were last night, and the Padres hit a two-run home run to bring it to 5-2. to two. That's when they put the swag chain on you. And by the way, not with a lot of excitement last night. They were like, okay, here, have it. <laughs> You know, it used to be everybody jumping up and down, people dancing in the in the dugout. Now it's like, okay, we've been doing this swag chain bit all year. Here you go, man. I know we're still down by three runs. No, I've have never you seen not it. seen it? Brittany? I mean, I'll, I'll, to be fair, I don't think I've ever watched a Padres game unless they were playing the Dodgers. Yep, understandable. <laughs> there you go. There it is, right That's there. There's the like. swag yeah. chain. A lot there of people were wearing them too. They were selling them, and it spins. Yeah, yeah they've made a lot of money. I off mean, these things. well. Brittany, to me, to be fair, you've watched the Padres play the Dodgers all year or at the time that they played. And the Padres won most of those games. So I'm pretty sure you've seen that chain before. Now, don't be shy. Come on now. Come on now. No, really. I don't know. I don't think I've seen it before. Not in person, at least. But I have to say, Petco Park and the Padres put on a great show. There was this, um, I think it was anytime it's two strikes, uh, this Pirates of the Caribbean music starts playing. And then they've got <laughs> some great rollers. I mean, I'm into it. They put on a show. Win or lose. All right, Brittany Erton is here. You see her on TVG. You see her on NBC's coverage of the Triple Crown. And she's down here in Del Mar for the summer. And she's a big Dodger fan. So she was at the Dodgers Padres game last night and says she's going back tonight. So, Brittany, um, while we have you, I'd be curious to hear um, how you think things are going at Del Mar this summer. I know I haven't seen you too much, unfortunately. And I, I had a breakthrough COVID case, which knocked me out for 10 days. But, um, I think it's been an amazing summer, even no concerts, you know, no big festivals, you know, not the normal size crowds per se. But when I come out on Saturdays and Sundays, I think Del Mar's having a great summer. What do you think? No, I'm with you. And uh, first and foremost, glad to see and hear that you're feeling better um, and anyone out there that's gone through COVID. But it has been a really fun me. I mean, we're so blessed by great weather. Honestly, I think we could use a little rain here and there, just not on race days. Great energy with the crowd. If, compared to last year, there were literally 10 people at the track whenever I was working. So it didn't feel like a race day. But Pacific Classic Day, which we just had on Saturday, great racing, great energy, people having fun. I mean, it's everything that you want to have at the races. So I'm just grateful that fans are back. It's, it's not the same without them, no doubt. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to um, not just what's happening at Del Mar this summer, but I'm really looking forward to the Breeders' Cup coming, which I'm sure will have you immediately right back down here, correct? Oh, yeah. I'll be down here probably Halloween through the entire fall meeting. I'm so happy to have it back here. I mean, I, I am biased, but I think it should stay on the West Coast all the time because we do have the beautiful weather. But I, what was your take on it, living in San Diego? I thought that Breeders' Cup knocked it out of the park first time out in 2017. Yeah. I mean, we loved it. You know, they had the uh, setup down on 15th street in Del Mar. They called it the barn at the beach. And um, we actually did a live radio broadcast from there. I want to say on the Thursday before the Breeders' Cup races on Friday. And it was great. You know, we had Rob Machado, the pro surfer, who's become a friend of the show and Bo Derek, who's a great friend of horse racing. Um, she was stopped by. And then we, we you know, I, I think I emceed the event that afternoon. So that was really right. a lot of fun. Um, and then, you know, just Del Mar was alive at a time of year when it wouldn't normally be like that. And I think that what the Breeders' Cup felt was, wow, they've got the hotels, they've got the restaurants, they've got the facilities, they've got the weather. Like, this is the best place in the world to have the Breeders' Cup. Now, of course, you know, you still want to have the, the history of Santa Anita. And then they've got to kind of take care of the locals back in Kentucky at Churchill Downs and at Keeneland. But 
you know, going to New York where the weather is completely unpredictable, especially at that time of the year, makes no sense. So I'm hoping that it just becomes a, a four track rotation between, you know, Keeneland and Churchill Downs and S Santa Anita and, and Del Mar. I mean, that's my hope. It seems like that. It will be, at least for the next couple of years. I had spoken with Dora Delgado, who was on um, a show, Cocktails and Conversation, that Nick Luck and I do. And she was saying they would love to have it go to other tracks, but say Belmont Park. They have to work on their facilities. They need more suites, et cetera. It just has to be more prepared for what Breeders' Cup has transformed into. And obviously, weather is a huge issue. So she said it's kind of on this four-track rotation, not necessarily on purpose, but the four tracks have just done such a beautiful job at hosting the Breeders' Cup that they keep wanting to go back there. So um, I'm hoping after Keeneland, they haven't announced it yet, it would go back to Santa Anita, maybe then Churchill, back to Del Mar. Not sure what it would be, but I can't wait. I think it's fun. You have everything you need, like you said, right here in Del Mar. You just add the international flair with the horses and the people and two great days of racing. Yeah. Hey, Brittany, um, before you go, I got to tell you that um, going to the track is like my favorite thing to do. But when I had COVID and I was quarantining, using the TVG app and being able to virtually feel like I'm there because I've got the live video. I've got race analysis. I've got, you know, expert picks. I can make all my wagers right there on the app. As much as being at the track is like my favorite thing to do, the app is unbelievably easy. Hashtag not an ad. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> I completely agree with you. I mean, if you can't be at the track, which we know for a good year and a half, nobody really could. So we thank everyone for watching and the support. But yes, they have enhanced the Watch TVG app to a whole new level. We have jockey cams. We have the drone footage. There are a lot of new features. I mean, the production value at Del Mar this summer has been through the roof. So I'm with you. If you can't be there, you got the next best thing. Watch I take TV. all the credit, by the way, I take all the credit for jockey cam. We were the first people to do that years ago on our reality series, stable wars. We put a, a, a whatever those cameras are called on top of a jockey like a and GoPro? now you GoPro, and you guys use it every day. It, the, the view of the jockey in the race is one of the most fascinating views of sports television. There is it's awesome. Brittany is great to be with you and uh, perhaps we'll see you tonight down at Petco park. Hope so. Go Dodgers. Thanks for having me, guys. It has been far too long. I love the I know. conversations. The passion is far none. We'll see you this weekend at Del Mar. Thanks, Brett. Thanks, guys. Everybody, hey, before we hit this break, I want to remind everybody, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. For any of your real estate needs, you need Gary Cooper. He can help you. He can help you buy, sell, refinance, position yourself to buy anything you need. MountainTrustRealty.com, MountainTrustMortgage.com, 24-7. This is your go-to guy, Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. That is our guy. I'm telling you right now, Coop, a freaking loop. Stick around, everybody. I want to get back to more on the big story of the day, the Padres and the Dodgers. It's where all of our minds are at. Hang out. This is Kaplan and crew from the 7 Mile Casino Studios. All right, everybody, wrapping yeah, things so up here today. Three, and uh, tell you what, Browner, you should probably come down to the game tonight. If Alex is going to the game, if I'm going to the game, you should come down to the game. You got some tickets? I don't, but... So, yeah. Where are okay. you parking, by the way? Where do, where, where do you park when you go to the game? Across the street from the ballpark in the Lexus lot. Oh, you're a baller. Yeah. Okay. Well, you thought he was parking there. You know he ain't walking up two blocks and all that madness, all ruckus, all those regular, those oh, regular. Oh, 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 oh me neither. Oh, you know me neither. I park. I literally park across the street on the other side, but uh, I just went on to buy my parking spot and it's sold out. You know uh -oh. what? Though? You know what I might do though. What I might do is, um, and we can talk about it. But I'm going to be getting down there a little bit later than you. I actually might instead of parking across the street at the Lexus lot. Maybe I'll park like five or six blocks away from the ballpark and walk it out. And the reason being to get out of there quickly. There you, you know, go. Because if you park super close to the park, luck. yeah, getting out of there can be a real pain in the ass. Unless, by the way, if the Padres have a huge lead and I leave early, or if the Dodgers have a huge lead and the Padres aren't coming back, maybe I maybe I bounce. But maybe I will park. I always away. prefer to park further away and walk because it also gives me a chance to kind of absorb like the downtown. 
mm-hmm. and, and walk through it and just kind of enjoy San Diego. Yeah, it was just Uber. Ubering is probably the smartest idea. Yeah, if you got a hundred bucks, expensive. Oh, really? Well, parking parking's that expensive too, parking's man. A pain in the ass. It ain't SoFi. Yeah, right. It ain't one hundred and ten bucks to park at SoFi. Yeah, that's true. All right, men, make a prediction. What happens tonight? Snell versus Bueller. Tonight's the win. Dodgers. Wait a second. L.A. Brown. He picked- don't do that to me. Don't do that. Yeah, don't, don't do that, do that. to you. You're I told Charger y'all. Fan. I told y'all what was going to happen. Her vote for the win. I told y'all what was going to happen. It's going to be a sweep. And then after this, we're going to make a run to get the wild card. Mr. It's over if they get swept. Maybe mm-hmm. they'll get no hit tonight because apparently you think no hitters are the end of the world too. Well, I mean, it hasn't exactly gone well since they've gotten no hit, has it? Maybe that'll straighten them back out. One A book in no hitters. After that, here we go. Buckle up. <laughs> Alex, this is the night you think that the Padres win one, huh? This is the only shot they got. So, I mean, I'm, there's not even a, gr- a good shot. They said Walker Dodgers Miller's coming so back good, tomorrow. But, uh, I mean, Blake Snell. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. yeah who Today's knows the best shot they got. Back, who knows what he is? <laughs> All right. And by the way, and you're going against Scherzer, yeah. right? I mean, you got Max Scherzer tomorrow, Everybody's too. Scared of him. What do you mean nobody's scared of him? The only person scared of him is Dave Roberts. Oh, yeah. Okay. Don't yeah. touch me. Yeah, don't All touch right. me. All right, well, um, I up. also uh, really did predict that the Dodgers would sweep the Padres, but I have this weird but feeling. But you also predicted that the Padres would win yesterday. What are you doing? Well, you didn't. I didn't. What no, you are didn't. you doing, sir? I don't remember yeah. predicting the Padres would win oh, yesterday. Oh, yeah. my God. You, you literally said... What go to our Twitter. Oh, Twitter. Go to our Twitter. Me saying that they were going to get swept and you reacting to me. And then you followed up me by saying you think they're going to win tonight. Get out Actually, of here. I don't really remember saying that because I, mm-hmm. I like a bullpen day. I, uh, I guess I don't remember. <laughs> what can I tell you? A lot on my mind, fellas. What can I tell you? Um, wow. I would think that tonight, Bueller, just, he's just too good. So you're you know, picking the and, Padres? And Snell. But yeah, like something in my gut tells me the Padres. <laughs> something in my there gut tells me the Padres. Yeah. Hey. Hey, in, injuries happen. Yeah. Uh huh. All right, LA maybe, Cap. Maybe Bueller yeah. doesn't. I will tell you, LA, LA Cap did say the Dodgers were going to sweep the Padres. That I can tell you. No, you, no, you didn't. <laughs> did you no, flip flop, LA? You <laughs> I guess I did. Baby. I guess I did. Yeah. I didn't mean to. All right. I guess I did. All right. Listen, we got to go. I'll see you guys tonight at the game. Peace out.